Hey guys, good morning, good morning. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another live session of Stock Sniper Trading. My name is Dave, guys, my partner is Ron. Let's get down to business here, guys. Ping in on US 30, sell, okay? I'm jumping in. That Guys, that's a 100 pip drop. It's, yes, we caught it. Hey, guys, 200 pips, please, secure. <laughs> Trading with a perfect broker is the key, which takes you one step ahead. At AFX, we have you covered. The future of Forex is Zero Commission Here at AFX, we offer Ultra Low Commission, which starts at 99 cents per lot. Our accounts spreads start from 0.0, .0 pips. With account leverage up to 500x, and can have a minimum deposit of $100, with an additional 100% deposit bonus, regulated by HEMC Greece, compliant with ESMA, EU, regulated with FSEA, South Africa, nothing to lose, but something to gain. Trade with the world's most liquid market provider, AFX, recommended by Stock Sniper Trading. To get started use the affiliate link below. As a trader, we all look for tight or low spreads, which helps us to get in and out of the market. Using the right broker can help us try different strategies with multiple options of brokers on the web. Here at Stock Sniper Trading, we have a recommended broker that is Hanko Trade. With spreads as low as zero pips and leverage up to 500x, Hanko Trade is just one click away. With multiple account types to choose from, you also have a minimum deposit of $10. Using Hanko Trade's affiliate program, refer a friend and earn up to a 40% commission on trading volume. Built by traders, for traders. Hanko Trade. Hey guys, welcome everybody. Welcome to Stock Sniper Trading. My name is Ron. My partner is Dave. Welcome guys. Welcome to SST. This is our New York afternoon session. We're going to go from uh, 12 p.m. Eastern till 3 p.m. Uh, so it's going to be a three hour session. We're going to do some top down charting. We're going to do some analysis on some indices, some uh, other securities we'll be looking at as well. And uh, hopefully we can find some setups this afternoon and uh, we can learn and earn together. So welcome everybody and thanks for joining everyone in Zoom. Thank you for joining. Um, and before we get started, guys, um, just please everybody trade with your proper risk account management. It is a very important case okay, for all traders whether you're a beginner or you're intermediate or advanced or you're professional you must be trading with proper risk management guys this is not gambling okay um, so please manage your own accounts and um, we will go from there okay do not risk too much especially if you're learning if you're learning there's nothing wrong with learning with a demo account or if you want to learn with a live account and get the real true raw emotions out of the market I highly recommend you trade with the smallest sizes possible that your broker allows you to trade with so those being penny sizes but you're not looking at the dollar figures you're looking at your percent gains and your or daily pip or points goals case okay? and then um, trust the process the money will come after once you learn what you're doing and then you can apply it to a larger account or a prop firm and then with that same percentage or pips then you can start to accumulate more um, money for your account okay and um, so guys we're gonna get started with um, you know, Dow Jones we're gonna start to look at how US 30 is moving then we'll analyze Nasdaq as well over here guys on the right side of my chart this is called bookmap this is a live liquidity platform and depth of market um, and over here is the depth of market is showing the bids these are the bids in the green and these are the offers above us in red this is the current order book for Dow Jones okay so what I'm looking at is this one YMMM3 a C bot rhythmic so this is actually the futures market of the Dow Jones which is over here on the candlesticks I'm looking at it over here so we will 
uh, um, describe what's going on here and help educate with this too. But this is a little bit more advanced than your traditional candlesticks. So number one, focus on your candlesticks, learn your, your basic price action. Then when you combine this, um, then it can help you become a better trader. But if it is really confusing for you and you don't understand it and all you're seeing is bubbles right now, that's fine. But just don't focus just on the bubbles. Try and understand that this is a live auction and we have offers and bids and um, there's a lot of um, positioning and things like that for future moves. And right now you can see that we're just trading right by the VWAP. So it's a lot of consolidation. The book is kind of balanced right now. So we'll talk about all of that, like the imbalances in the book and things like that. Okay. So, and we also have Yoda on the call with us. So thank you for joining Yoda. Yeah. Thanks, Ron. Welcome guys. Um, okay. So Yoda will be giving his analysis as I'm doing top down. Yoda, feel free to just jump in anytime. Um, if you see something or want to talk about something, I'll just be doing my top down charting and things like that. But right now we have a big bearish candle starting. So noon, this is a new hourly candle and you can see the momentum where US 30 was coming up to this area of resistance, same with NASDAQ. And then all of a sudden now, a new hourly candle brings in that added volatility and that volume in the market. And we have this big red candle that's coming down, maybe breaking some structure right here. Okay. So if you are in any current trades or if you're in anything, please manage them. I will be doing some top down analysis and things like that. Okay. So number, what I start off with is I start off with um, the daily, okay? So I want to see not just what's going on on the five minutes. I want to see an overall picture of the market. Like, for example, if I wasn't trading um, yesterday or I didn't trade uh, the day before, maybe I took a week off and I don't know what's going on with the market. I don't want to just jump in and just on that five minute red candle when I don't know what's going on in an overall bigger picture. So um, if you've been tuning in with us, we've been talking about all of this on the daily, like over here last week, start of May, May 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we had this four day downtrend trend. And then on Friday was NFP. They bounced the market right back up. And did we break any highs? We've, we've been trying to break this high up here, 33,800 level. We've, we got rejected here. We got rejected here and we got rejected. Uh, again yesterday. So there was a lot of offers up here on a higher time frame, absorbing all of that liquidity for maybe positioning it for CPI and PPI news. And now we're getting a little bit shift in the market where the daily volume is starting to fill yesterday's candle. Do you guys remember trading yesterday? Okay, it opened, it came up and we were trading yesterday in the afternoon. We caught the bottom in the afternoon. This is where we bought the bottom. We had an SST signal and us on the live. This is where we kind of positioned our buy and it came all the way up and we kind of were part of that entire wick that was pushing all the way up and it closed right here. So now if we're following the volume, it opened side by side. Here's our opening price of the Dow, 33,495, 500, nice psychological level. And then they pushed it up. It opened green. It came up about 100 pips to 33,600. That's our high of the day. And that's where we got rejected. So what I do is I place a purple line at the high of the day. You can use whatever color you want. Just understand your color coding system. So you understand when it comes to your colored line, you understand what it means there. So for me, if I see a purple line at the high up here, it means it's the high of the day. So we came up there and we got rejected. Then we also broke our critical open close from the previous day. So I'm going to place a yellow line here. It is a, it is an important area in the market and we have to identify it. We're nowhere near it right now, but at some point, maybe we may come back and revisit it. So as we were breaking down, we broke some other critical levels. And one level that I, in particular, I'm interested in is always this area here. Um, I'm always plotting this on the daily and we always sometimes come here like a magnet, revisit this area. So why? Because we came down, pushed up, volume closed there. We came down, volume closed above the line. We came down, volume closed above the line. We came and touched the line, it went back up. We came down, we broke it and went back up. So this is a critical area where they kept the volume above here. So when we bring it across, we may revisit this at some point. And currently it's from the open where we are now, it's 50% of the volume, 33,380 area. Um, and now we continue to push down and we broke yesterday's low. So let's mark that, yesterday's low. And when we did that, we broke, that's where we bought yesterday, and then it broke uh, as well here, and look at all of this area. So where do we come down to? I hope you guys had this area identified on your charts, guys. 
How many of you guys did in Zoom? Did you guys have this area? This is a critical area. Okay, this is where we had a gap. It's a little bit more than 50% of this big bullish candle, but do you see how we touched it right down there? Beautiful, 33,100, and now we're pushing right back up, similar to like yesterday, just different timing right now. We're pushing up, but if it comes back down with volume, now maybe we could retrace 50% of this yellow to yellow tape, and then it's roughly, um, I'm just guessing, okay? So again, I'm doing my 50% rule, maybe right around here, and it will cut this body in half again. Maybe it doesn't come all the way back down to the low day, maybe it pit, uh, a little stop here, and we're stopping at 50% of this volume right here. And if we do come back down to the low and we break, okay, then we do have to acknowledge um, the break of 33,000 down into here. And then there's a larger gap I have. So it's this big bullish candle. If I look to the left of the chart, then I get my wicks and then I get some other critical areas in the market. So I can place a line like right over here where I got a wick, a body, a wick. It's almost 33,000, 32,985. So an area in there. Um, so I can see now today's daily volume. We opened, we came up, lower high, we got rejected, we continued to break down, we broke yesterday's low, we came down, it's picking up liquidity, and now it's coming right back up. So this is where the book is kind of balanced right now. You can see how it's evenly, like there's an red offers and green offers. So sometimes when we see an inefficiency in the book and we see it's where the book is all green bids going all the way up here, you can tell that the book is kind of imbalanced. It's got more bids than there is offers. And sometimes where all these offers come all the way down here where it's red and then we just have a few bids then there's an inefficiency in the book and it's showing an imbalance where there's more offers so when when we're kind of right in the middle near the VWAP the the book is kind of balanced it's kind of consolidating um, it's at a fair price like a fair price where it's just trading sideways so what we need to do is we need to kind of find these imbalances in the book imbalances in the markets and um, that's how we trade okay so that's what trading is um, and then you trade to imbalance zones you fill imbalances um, you got to understand what consolidating is and things like that. Okay, so um, that's enough for daily um, analysis. Now let's move on to the one hour. So the one hour now breaks down the daily candlesticks, breaks down the daily, where we can break these down now into 60 minutes, and we can see where the big moves were in the market. So over here, um, 7 a.m., uh, there was news, okay, 8 a.m., so we pushed down, and the news came out, was bullish initially, and then it got rejected hard, almost as a shooting star candle, and then here's our ignited bar, guys, okay, so we had our webinar yesterday on ignited firecracker candlesticks, so hopefully this kind of helped you guys out. Um, identifying these here we got another ig ignited candle and things like that so got to understand um, what those mean here we opened and it continued to push down 9 a.m. into Wall Street now we kind of recovered right over here we have a bullish candle but we were this is kind of half of that big red candle right over here of Wall Street so we kind of came up to almost the halfway point like right here if i was just visually looking at half of this big red candle it would be around this area but i get some information up here too with those bodies so i'm going to place like an hourly white line right over here and what that's telling me is this used to be hourly support turned to resistance did we come almost we came up and touched it and it got rejected so currently in the market we know where there's some hourly resistance this used to be hourly demand so if i bring this across right over here we're coming into some hourly resistance okay so i'm going to place it red over here where do we have some good um volume in the market on the hourly this is what's called like fair value okay so you have this big bullish candle and then from this wick down to here it's a lot of volume you're holding that so if you kind of want to figure out where your kind of your bigger zone is down into here that could be your 50% like in here your golden zone of this candle normally I look right at half of it if I was looking directly right at half of it the body it's kind of right in there so I would make a white line but this is your zone this is like your golden pocket where this could be 50% and then up here is like 618382 above or below and then that's your actual zone so here if I like 
place this as a blue a green box this is telling me that in, in case it comes back into here it could pick up more bids and then form that double bottom pattern where it's coming it came down came back up if it does come back in here it could be red red but when it gets here maybe it makes a move when it gets down here maybe a move or the physical double bottom to the next block coming down into here you'd like to maybe hold in here to hold a higher low than to continue to push and maybe break this hourly resistance with more volume Volume, then when you get that push then we can take out possibly the the next half or quarter of the of the candle the supply remaining in the market and then we can take it up to maybe next higher highs so that's just a traditional double bottom pattern right now we're forming our neckline so right in here how we're going green red we might this might consolidate in here and that's why the book is pretty balanced right now because um, we're moving sideways right now so we have to remain patient for maybe a possible uh, trade or setup above here okay so what we're going to do now is we're going to break down the hourly candles and then we're going to go into the five minutes. Okay, so how has the market been moving today? If you look over here, right before the news, okay, 8.15, they came up for specifically a liquidity grab, pending hunt, take out all the orders up here. Then they pushed it down. They pinned it again up here, respected this area. They dropped. They broke the support level right here. And then the news came in, a little bit of a dead cat bounce, pull back. Um, leading into Wall Street, okay, so they came up, took out the highs, swept the highs again, right up to about 50%, a little higher than that body, and the big push down, another pullback, did we break above 50%? No, so it dropped all the way down, we found our bottom down here, and now we're coming right back up. So you see now where I was saying like the book is just trading sideways, kind of balancing itself out. This is not the greatest volume to be trading. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of box this area in. And what we're going to do is we're going to let it let it accumulate. And what we're going to look for is if we continue to break out of here, <clears throat> we'll watch this afternoon, if we can break this area of supply, 33,300 level, and maybe we can come up to back up to here and maybe take out this area, come up to that daily high yellow, and then we'll see what we can do if we can break the, the daily. And then this is where we kind of got a little bit structure in the market where maybe we might break out to there and maybe we'll have a little reaction up there, okay? So um, again, and when I'm measuring these zones, when I'm scalping, so if I'm taking like a move from here to the red line, I know that's about 30 to 35, 40 pips. Um, up to the yellow line, if we get up there, 70, and then to the top up there, it's uh, it's uh, one 100. Um, okay, so now it's just accumulating. We got green, we got a lot of rejections in this red area of supply, that's that hourly, and we're coming down, but every time we're coming up, it's coming up, red, green, red, green. You can scalp in here, guys. This is a, it's a, it's a big zone as well. Like the entire zone is roughly 60, 50, 60 pips. If you want to trade in here, like you take, you sell in here, it comes down red, you can go into profit. If you come in here, you go green, you can, but this is just an accumulating phase. It might be frustrating for a lot of traders trading in here. So you're either accumulating a position in here or you got to basically wait patient and you got to see what the overall move of the market is so the bigger picture is this to me looks like the first leg down v recovery of that big w now we're forming the neckline so what could happen here is we could come back down to either the hourly support the daily or if it really wants to come down and pick up the double bottom down in here um, they could or sweep the the pending orders down here and then come back up and do something like this and then if it kind of breaks out of here we have the official double bottom with a liquidity grab and they sweep the low so then we can uh, predict that it could be a strong move coming up okay um, also to sell if it breaks down here and we're looking to push down a little bit we can look here break of this level they kind of few impulse moves that came down but no volume really closed below so we'll watch below here to see if some volume can close below here too and then again if I'm measuring my moves so I know exactly if I'm taking this trade below here and to come roughly to the white line that's about 30 35 pips halfway that's your 10 15 20 pip scalp so and then to the daily is again 60 pips and if it breaks a little lower 80 and impossible 100 down there Okay, so it's just trading sideways, guys. Um, Blair, anything on US 30 before we move on to NASDAQ?
Um, aside from uh, Disney's ER yesterday, um, nothing really. There was that FDIC <coughs> announcement, which impacts regional banks, which plays a little factor. But I would say right now we're just barcoding until the afternoon. Okay. And guys, I have bookmap on the 15-minute time slices over here. Excuse me. <coughs> um, 11.30, 11.45, 12, and 12.15. And so we can see what's going on. So we have these are offers above us. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place like a yellow line where pretty much a lot of offers are um, in the market just so we can keep an eye on these levels. So over here at this area, 33, 342, there's 53 offers in the book right now. <coughs> so it looks like selling pressure is pushing down. We're breaking below the VWAP. So what can happen now is we can take out this low and then this is where we have most um, liquidity waiting, the bids in the market down in here. So let's also place a line in this area, <coughs> 33,288, 33,285 right over here to see if they can come down and touch us. So what it will be is it's going to be an impulse break. But when we come down here, we'll see if they trigger these bids and if it's going to be a wick that comes right back up. So we'll see if they um, can, can activate all these pending bids in the market and we'll see if it's going to come right back up or if it's going to pull back and then more offers are going to increase. And then we can possibly look to maybe continue the shorting. We'll get to gold. We'll get to gold. Um, just one moment. Okay, so you see how the book is kind of just um, shifting now where we're getting, it's getting like more red. It's getting more offers in the market. Okay, but we're coming down to some critical levels where there's a lot of bids. Like over here, it came down and it went right back up. Came down here, picked up those bids and went right back up. So could do the same thing, could come down here. And what it is doing is picking up the bids. You can see the wick. So we're still kind of inside this consolidating area. So we have to really wait for maybe either a closure below here, or um, it could just trade again inside here, which it's doing, okay? Um, so we'll keep an eye on all of this. Um, I'm just gonna place like an alert down here. Okay, so you see how they came down and almost activated those, but now the bids are getting a little higher. Okay, remember where I originally had it down here and see how they brought their bids a little higher. So they're accumulating those bids. So this is what sideways trading is. Okay, you see how that red candle came all the way down. It was nice, looked very bearish. And I guarantee you some sellers got caught down there. They were selling that big red candle right at the bottom and they sold right into a large pool of bids. And then now it's coming right back up. Okay, so we're going to move over, guys. We're going to look at NASDAQ. And um, then we'll do gold. Okay, so we'll leave US 30 right over here. Um, I'm going to leave also US 30 on book map. So I watch that as well. But we're going to move over to NASDAQ. Um, check out. Okay, so NASDAQ right now, like on the five minutes, it's consolidating as well. It's barcoding red, green, red, green, red, green. Um, so it's just accumulating itself, maybe for the afternoon. So let's do our daily analysis. So on the daily, we're making higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, and continuing to run up today. So it's uh, 13,400 right now, looking good, strong. Tech is strong. Google um, had good, what are they up, 4 or 5%? Oh, they've been up probably like nine in the last two days. Yeah. Yeah, today, I think, yeah. for what, today five? Today, uh, five right now. Yeah. Oh. Okay, guys, so Google, 5%, majority in NASDAQ pushing up. High, 13,400. Our low of the day, 13,300. Um, again, our critical levels, where do we open, where do we close? Right here, yesterday, today. Let's place a yellow line here. How did the volume, what happened today? We opened, we came down bearish, right down to here. So it touched this, this wick, touched in this area right over here. So normally where we had some resistance in the market right here, where it was red, red, if you brought this across and made it green, maybe you could have caught that little um, beautiful buy today on the daily down inside this area. So we came down. This was the wick where it came down red, back all the way back up. We're coming up. We broke the physical high from yesterday. Let's locate yesterday's high right here. 
And where do we go? We went for a new daily higher high up here and then we got rejected so far and here's the volume. Okay, so if we come back up, we're gonna test this yellow line and maybe for the high. And if we take out today's high, where could we go? So look to the left of the chart right over here. We're coming back, I'm looking at May of 2022, last year, one year ago, okay? These were a couple daily impulse wicks that broke out of here to 13,000 for 20 area, 422, beautiful area, and continuing to come up to 446, okay? This is where possible moves could happen um, today, tomorrow, next week, and then maybe the bigger area up there. Okay, that's good enough for upside, okay? Um, what happens if we pull back this afternoon? Okay, so, so far we are pulling back. If we continue to come down, um, maybe test where we opened, um, and then if we can't hold back down in here, um, I don't, I can't see us breaking today's low today, but if we do, then where could we go? Could um, come down to here, these wicks and bodies. So that's good enough for if we break the low. Guys, you see how we picked up those bids now? Okay, so we're coming right back up. Let's see if we can take out some highs, pull back, pick up more bids, and then we can go through here. Um, okay, so looking good on the daily for NASDAQ, US 30 is pushing right back up as well. And here's the hourly, okay? So hourly today um, over here, okay? This was London, 3 a.m., pulling up 4 a.m., 5 a.m., then they, 6 a.m., they pulled it back, 7 a.m., news coming in, um, PPI over here came up, bullish, closed. This is an inverted hammer candle, ignited bar to continue the three bar play all the way down to this daily pocket in here where it was a nice area to maybe look for some potential buys. Um, the hourly candle right here at 10 a.m. closed above 50% of the body. Here's the pullback right into 50% of the bullish body. It broke the high and there we go for the new higher high. And right now our session we just came down so our hourly support is still holding above the daily right here a white line and we just picked up the liquidity and now it could turn into a hammer candle breaking out. So what we're going to watch is to break this hourly resistance. One, two, three, four, four attempts on the hourly candles to break the daily high today. It hasn't broke it. Okay, so it's had four failed attempts up here. But maybe if it comes now with more volume, it might be able to break this area here. Okay, so we're going to focus on that. Uh, let's go into the five minutes and maybe look for a potential setup or how the fives are moving. Okay, so you can see it's been accumulating quite a bit. Okay, in this entire, if we look down here, it was accumulating when it was coming down. There was bullish divergence. So the low to the lower low coming into this bigger, uh, higher time frame uh, area, we got bullish divergence, which broke out, closed above, pull back, respected this area. So we are holding this entire area. Good guys, watch US 30. Okay, US 30 picked up all those bids and we're breaking out for that new high, guys. Okay, sorry, I wanted to have this done faster. And also NASDAQ is breaking out. So we also have a fight, yep, um, US 30 is popping, guys. There it goes. We're gonna see if we can take out all those offers above us. Watch if they get pulled too. You caught US 30, sir? Nice, okay. Um, guys, I will get right back. Let me just put this right over here. Sorry. Okay, so US 30 came all the way from the bottom. Look at, we're gonna, we're breaking out our area here. Okay, so it, it's got a new high. This could be an impulse break. It's gonna close right now. So let's watch now for maybe a possible pullback to respect maybe 50% of this bullish candle, like right here. And okay, so we closed. Here's the pullback. We didn't close above, okay? So we got very, very, very close up there. Okay, so here's could be the pullback where we're coming down red. Maybe we're gonna see how far down it can come down. So see, we broke the high, okay? Our next offers, big offers are 33,400 level, right over here, okay? So now it's pulling back. Now here are our bids. Where it used to be resistance, our bids are here now, 342. So let's see if it pulls all the way back down into here to pick up all these bids, or if it can pick up a higher low, bids and then these ones will start to populate above us are we looking for the discount lisa we're always looking for the discount we're always looking to to be the discount buyer when things are on sale we go shopping you never kind of want to buy the highs of everything 
See, like right now, the way how I look at this is there was traders who bought the high of that wick. Look at the pullback right now. Okay, so if you restrained yourself from buying that, the pullback right now is 25 pips. So think about all those guys that bought up there. They're probably in 25 pip drawdown right now. So if I wanted to enter right now, I know that I'm saving myself 25 pips. I, there's the discount, 30 pip discount right now. So, you know, if you restrained yourself from buying the high up there, now you're getting a full discount. If you want to enter in here, you know you've already saved 30 pips. If you need to use that type of psychology, um, where you made a good move, where you didn't where you didn't bite on that impulse, you just saved yourself 30 pips of drawdown, maybe even more. But now we're seeing, okay, so now it's developing a little wick. Okay, see, look at it, look at it big fake out okay so <laughs> that's that's why you don't play games inside the book when it's kind of doing this right now okay when it's in this consolidating area see how dangerous it can be all those buyers look at this might even liquidate everything all the way down here so let's watch what it does if it takes out the low that's a nasty fake out guys I did not take no buy I didn't see any volume that closed above I was watching it to see and that's a big red candle. How can we buy that? Did you guys, did anybody get kind of sucked in here or maybe bought the bottom? But when we come up here, that's where maybe you think about your position. You got to think about scaling out. You're coming into a supply or have maybe your trailing stop loss here um, because it can get very dangerous when we're trading inside a consolidating zone. These candles are intended for us guys. We are scalpers, we're intraday traders. These are the candles that screw you and I over. Okay, so we have to learn how to restrain ourselves. If we do take that, that's why sometimes I personally, if I'm taking a trade that I'm not sure about, I take a small little feeler size. I take a small size. Because if I bought that with a smaller size and then it just came all the way down, I could close my position with a minimal loss. Um, but if you went in big up there, thinking it's going to be a huge breakout, the market just humbled you real fast. Okay, I'm trying to not be rude or anything like that, but I'm just trying to tell you that those were buyers that bought up there. And look at what the market just did to them. Probably stop them out because that entire candle, you know, just this candle alone is 55 pips. Currently, 55. So um, any normal retail trader that bought up there 55 pips is a natural stop loss um, unless they're holding in, in in the drawdown so now we still if we're not in a trade or if you are in a trade we still got to watch what's going on it came down but look at the low okay so this low 242 is actually higher than the previous low so that just that tells me right there that the bids increased momentarily Okay, so we have to focus on these things. Don't lose focus. Just because you see a big red candle, okay, we, we, we literally see the big red candle, but you also have to follow the lows. Okay, this low, they increase the bids right up here from the previous low. So that is still showing a little bit of strength on the buyers. Do we understand that? Um, how it made this higher low. So you can see here the bids increased from the previous. So, so far, just in a few minutes, we can see that they are starting to build a higher low position. That matters. But then we have to watch. Are they going to come back up and at least touch 50% of that big red candle right here? Or are the sellers going to continue to push it down and break the low and then take out this low? Okay. So we are in an area of consolidation, but you still got to watch price action, what it's doing. And then this is where it could get a little slow. See where we are on RSI. If you guys follow RSI, it's right at 50. It's been at 50, coming up 58, 50, 58, 50. So we're right at this neutral territory where uh, neither the, bu the bulls or the bears are in control. That's why we're moving sideways. So there's, it's just like a tied, tied baseball game. We're, we're, in the, we're in the fifth inning and the score is 4-4. Okay, we still have a lot of game left. It's half the baseball game and the score is 4-4. So who's going to take over the rest of the baseball game? Will it be the green team or the red team? That's what we got to figure out this afternoon.
Blair, what do you want? Um, what's going on with Nasdaq? Sorry, guys. Um, we were watching that, but Nasdaq, same thing too. So with Nasdaq, what we're going to try and watch is maybe a move above thirteen thousand four hundred. Uh huh. Nas is uh is trying to break a downtrend. Probably test uh, yesterday's high. Just a flat day, guys. It's a flat day this afternoon. Okay, so we 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 don't need to force trades. You know, when the when the volume comes, it'll come. Um, hopefully, we're positioned in the in the right time and place for it. Like yesterday, when we started the call yesterday, it was perfect. That volume kind of walked right into us. But um, this type of stuff traps a lot of traders like let's be honest with each other um when i used to tr like i still trade in this area like there's always consolidation every single day so sometimes i get caught up in this you know so i gotta kind of restrain myself too um to know that there is going to be better volume um i just want to see like what they're doing up here they came up here rejected it came up rejected it they came up again it's lower highs so i want to see maybe if it can break this a uh, little trend line that they have forming. Maybe if it breaks below here, then we'll get that drop coming down into here. Um, but it's still building, so I respect what the what the bids are doing. Um, same with NAS, um, US 30, came up, came back down, and it's right back, right in the middle. So um, we're just still watching, okay? You see how the book is balanced, okay? See how it's equal number, like red and green below us? We're right in the middle. So the book is consolidating. We gotta wait for those imbalances. So we'll stick with this, guys, maybe for the next 30 minutes, and then we'll do gold at 1 p.m. If you guys want, I can do gold right now, okay? But can we keep an eye on our indices, please? Um, I'll be watching um, Bookmap, but you guys, well, let me give you guys the chart. Sorry, one second. Okay, we'll watch this candle close for 90 seconds, and then we're going to move over to gold. Anybody watch any basketball last night? The Lakers game? Anybody watching NBA playoffs? Anthony Davis taken out in a wheelchair. <laughs> Shaq and Charles Barkley just clowning on him. Blair, did you see that? Didn't he hurt his elbow only? <laughs> yeah. And then, and then he, he got taken out in a wheelchair. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, he's made out of glass. It's, unless the the league is fixed to go seven games, oh man, it's 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 getting ridiculous. It's so hard to watch basketball these days. The Knicks game was good, yeah. Okay, so buyers pushed it up. Uh, about 50, just a little less than 50%. So still lots of volume in the candle preceding us. And now they're pushing it down. We're going to see if the selling pressure can take out the lows down here. Okay, so we can physically see where all the lows are. But again, if it comes down here, there's a big bid waiting in here, 57 to get possibly filled. But what we need to do is keep taking these out. But I can see that the, the the sellers are starting to get exhausted too. Do you guys see this a little bit? Like, um, see where the sellers are coming down into here, starting to get a little exhausted. And then down in here where they were pushing it down, um, I don't see like too much red um, bubbles like below here or here. So it's just showing me initially that they are getting a little exhausted. Even down in here, they came down, but nothing really down here. The next bids brought it right back up. So selling pressure is slowly exhausting right now okay but that's still not enough for us to um, take like trades and everything because we're still consolidating but that's good to see um, that we see selling pressure exhausting and now our, if our bids continue to accumulate now we can continue to possibly come back up so that was a big 
drop, but it was supported nicely. We never really broke any structure. It came down, the bids are picking up higher lows, and now we have a nice full body candle. Let's see if we can close above 50%. Does that help make sense, guys? Okay, I know some of you guys got caught in that cell, but um, it dropped 55 pips because naturally that's what they do. They, you, they'll stop you out, you and I as a retail trader, but look, at, it's still building, okay? So we still have to stay focused. We still gotta watch this, okay? Same with NASDAQ, it's still building. So we got nice bids supporting the move. We see a little bit of selling pressure getting exhausted down here. We just need to see more blocks come in the market. Okay, these are kind of like block orders. See this one at 318, 44 bids. We've got one developing down here, 33,280, 30 bids coming in. So these are like blocks, order blocks waiting to get activated. Okay, so we want to support the move. We're right near close to that VWAP again. This is where it's that tight, tight fight right now. 50%. See how we came right up to 50% and now it pushes down. So this is what's tedious about trading. You know, like yesterday it was when the market is moving really, really nice, we're all laughing, we're all clapping, right? But when the market does this, then it's it's difficult to trade, right? But we just have to be patient, okay? Please, guys, if one thing that you can learn, not only in trading, but in life, just be patient, be disciplined. Good things come to individuals who are patient. Any, any person that you know in your life that's really impatient, they're probably uh, making wrong decisions because they're just acting on impulse. I had a, my friend, okay? I'll tell you a, a true story. My personal good friend, um, when the market was at all-time highs for housing, he thought he was making the best decision. He wanted to move close to my neighborhood over here. Um, uh, there was a home for two, um, two, two million, but it went down to one million nine fifty. Okay, and he thought he was saving fifty thousand dollars, greatest investment of his life. But I kept telling him the market was at all-time high for when there was bid wars and I told them you you are buying at the highs you're making a mistake I tried to be a good friend to him tell him that you're yeah I know it's nice you're buying a two million dollar home but that home six months one year if you're patient you could probably get it for one and a half maybe 1.3 maybe 1.2 and he just went all in he bidded it up he actually paid more than 195 it got bid to 2.1 he bought it and I don't even want to tell you the story six months later, um, that house in that area dropped to 1.5. The whole like street, there's like six for sale signs. They're all fighting to sell the homes. He can't, now it's 1.2 and uh, he's in trouble. So he made a very impulsive decision and didn't think about it, take his time to think about it. And uh, just like things like that, you can, and trading is the same way. If you make an impulse, decision like here if you were really excited that that big green candle was coming up and then you got caught okay because you made an impulse decision up there did any volume close above let's ask ourselves no did we close any volume above like this area no so it came up there but sometimes we got to show a little restraint Okay, so we're continuing to consolidate in here. It came up, back down. So it's still building. We maybe have to wait till 1 p.m. We might have to wait till 1.30 like yesterday. Maybe 2 p.m. Who knows? Maybe it's going to trade still inside here for the next little bit. Okay, but it's also coming back down. So if it comes down, we're going to see if it can take a break some lows here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move over to gold, guys. Let's take a look at what gold is doing. Okay, so right now it's developing a little bit of a double bottom. Okay, hopefully you can all see that. We've got our neckline right over here at 2022, and it's a nice physical neckline from over here. Okay, see where it was support at one time in the market? And look at how it turns to resistance at another time in the market, okay? Um, I could physically chart this right now and start trading this, but I don't do that. Let's go to the daily. In case you are just joining us and you haven't been watching gold for the last little bit, what has it been doing, okay? So gold has been trading pretty, pretty crazy lately with everything going on in the world. Um, over here, start of May, Tuesday, 
Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we came up to 2069. That was a big candle in the sw in the after hours that just jumped. And over there, here we had NFP pushed all the way back down to 50% of that big bullish candle that started everything at 2000. So when you're looking for your order block, okay, here's your order block on a daily. From below that wick to the body right here, if you drew if you draw this across, your block is 2000 to 1980 on the daily. Okay, that's your order block right over here. If it comes into here, we'll see it get triggered and maybe that's going to develop a, a nice little push to the upside. But if you lose all of this 1980 and below, then we're looking at 1950, 1930s down in here and possibly 1900. So um, you see here, 50% is still holding good volume. The first retest was right there at 2000 and it bounced. But now it's coming down with lower highs. So it's coming down with more volume. So we'll see when it, if it comes down here, if it breaks 2000, probably going to come down 50% to 1990. And then we'll see what happens at 1980. So that's for bear momentum on gold if it continues to come down. Okay, so so far um, we rotated back up. They pinned it on Wednesday, pushed down. Today, what do they do? Okay, 2040, that's lower than 2047, that's lower than 2053, that's lower than 2069. Okay, so that is like an M pattern where they're lowering the supply, they're lowering the offers in the market. They're pushing gold down. Do we see any new higher highs in the market? No. So naturally, it's um, pushing down, but we need to make new lows in the market. So we just broke this low, but we still have, look at today here, this is an important wick, 2008. Very, very important um, if we take out that low. Okay, so what is our low of the day on gold? <clears throat> 2010, 11 area, purple and purple. Um, critical levels now. Okay, so from yesterday, we um, opened, we came up bullish, we got rejected, we came down here, and then we finished at 2030, we closed. And where did we open today? Our, our roughly same area, 2030. So that's a critical yellow line. And then we pushed down and we broke yesterday's low, 2020. We broke it. And continuing to break. Now we're um, trading right in this area. This is a very, very, very critical area on gold right inside here. We've got a lot of bodies in here. Body, body, body at this 2016 level. So if we continue to push down this afternoon, we may come down to 2014. And then to the low of the day, and if we break low of the day, we're coming down to that 2008. And then you can see in here, there was a lot of wicks coming up, a lot of like market here, there was a lot of supply. So if we turn this area right over here from supply into demand and we bring it across, this could be our pool of money where we come into 2008 to 2004, where maybe it picks up some demand in here. Okay, so right now it's pushing down. Let's go to the one hour. Check it out, one hour. Now we can see the big moves in the market. Obviously gold moves around 8, 9, 10 a.m. Okay, on news, again, 8, 9, 10, big move. But since then, we've came down big bearish engulfing candle. Look, uh, roughly it's still below 50%. We pulled back to 2022, the daily. We came back down, now we're coming right back up. Is it gonna be 50% or it's barcoding? Red, green, red, green. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna roughly go into the five minutes and watch but I just want to show you that this area used to be hourly support that pivoted the market back up and now it's acting same area as some resistance in the market right here so we're gonna make this red and then down here <clears throat> excuse me we're gonna make this area green on the hourly because it is holding this level still has not broken Okay, so we're we are physically barcoding inside here. I'm just going to get rid of this uh, line down here since we've okay. And this is an important daily area right now. So we are just trading sideways in here. This could be a larger bear flag where it's consolidating, and maybe we'll break down, continue to low, or it may come up, close above here, retest this, and maybe we might be filling some imbalance back up to 2030. Let's go to the five minutes. Okay, so this is now what's happening so we came down 
Found the bottom, we came up, here's our neckline. We consolidated for a little bit, could not break out to the upside, so they brought it right back down. We couldn't hold this daily area, so it came right there, higher low, into the screen box. Now we're coming back up. So this is our most recent high right now, 2018, like on the five minutes. And what did they do? They're continuing to bring it down. Okay, so we have a lower, lower offers right now. It's about 50% of that big red candle. If I come down and place like an order, a block, box, supply, whatever you want to call it. Okay, now I'm watching now. So if I'm looking to scalp from here to there, if I'm looking to take that move, if it comes up there, looking for about 15, 20, possibly 30 pips up to there, if I take that trade. Um, so, but right now it's pushing down. So we're gonna see, is it, it's, is it gonna develop um, like 50% of this candle right there is going to hold maybe now like a little green position right here. If it breaks this, then it's potentially going to come all the way back down into this green box. What we want to see is it going to be a quick grab and come right back up because if that's the case, then we can start maybe positioning a buy above here if it dips down. So I'm just going to let gold continue doing what it's doing. Um, I will adjust where I'm looking to buy and sell after it just consolidates a little bit more. Okay, so we'll leave gold right over here. I'll be watching it as well. Guys, we can also do, does anybody trade oil in the afternoon or do you guys want to do like a currency pair in here? We can either look at, um, do you guys have like a currency pair that's actually moving, not consolidating? Maybe we can chart it together. But if everything is um, just trading sideways right now, oil guys, okay, yeah, we can look at oil too. Okay, so US 30, is it doing anything? Not really. We're just st staying right in here. See how the book is balanced, okay? We have like an equal number of offers above us and we kind of have an equal number of bids below us. There's no real like imbalances showing in the market right now. So it's just it's just constantly slow slow accumulation. The sellers are accumulating, the buyers are accumulating. At some point in time, they will release the volume and it could be released to the upside. It could be released to the downside. could be coming up and just come up and fake out the market to the high, take out all the pending orders, then they bring it right back down. Um, so things like that. And then as this thing gets higher, like um, we can start to maybe bring like maybe a sell position in um, a little higher, but you have to understand that when you're doing that, you're trading inside this consolidating area. Okay. NASDAQ is pushing up slowly, coming up to here, 13,400. And then if it kind of gets faked out of the high, we could look for maybe a sell position starting, like you could go right below if you, if, if you feel confident doing that, but we could also maybe look for maybe a sell position below here. And then, but you got to understand, we're trading inside the box, okay? And then when I when I measure that move, like if it comes from here down to there, because it could come down there and get green again and get, pick up a green candle, that move is roughly 20 to 25 pips, 30 pips into that green box. So we'll keep an eye on everything as everything develops. And we have 10 more minutes and then we're going to get a new hourly candle in the market. So at 1 p.m., maybe that's going to start to shake things up, add a little bit of volatility. You should always be checking your hourly candles like before an hourly candle opens. Like here we have nine and a half more minutes to go. US 30's hourly candle opened, uh, came up, it made that high. That was that fake, fake out, okay, that we saw in the five minutes. And then it pushed all the way back down to the low and then it came back up and then here's the volume right now. So it's just it's a lot of indecision in the last hour we can clearly see on the five minutes how it's moving 
Um, NASDAQ has a bullish body where US 30 has a bearish body currently. So they are moving just a little bit different. Mrs. Jones is slacking. The market is real slow right now. Everything is. And then we'll do gold and oil, guys. Okay, so gold is still building a little bit. Okay, so if you guys can continue to watch, um, like we're in this ascending channel. Um, NASDAQ got it rejected up here. Maybe it's got to come back, pick a little bit more. Maybe we'll get more movement at 1 p.m. Sometimes they do a quick move right before the hourly candle um, to entice traders. So just be careful too. Um, I'm going to finish now in about eight minutes. I can do the top down, no problem on oil. Let's do this. So we're going to add oil to the mix. Okay, so daily on oil. Okay, wow. So oil's been... If you guys have been watching it, okay, so we had this daily uptrend uh, at the end of the month, March 31st, we closed here on a Friday. Over the weekend, there was news on OPEC um, with production issues and things like that, supply and demand. We shot up all the way back to almost $82. It came to the monthly supply area right over here to $83. And when we hit there, started to fill the imbalance in the market. That's the gap. Started to fill and completely filled it and engulfed it, pulled back and really pushed down we had um big big th these three days one two three days we're look at where we came down to 63 dollars and 50 cents we took out this low so they took out the low it's going to be met with a lot of bids we came up we closed here started this big move friday we closed here again they gapped up the market um and it came down it filled the imbalance and it closed up here so 74 dollars is roughly our weekly uh resistance right now and here's today's candle so oil big moves on oil guys um we got our day daily high 73 dollars and 50 cents our daily low, $70.60.70. What happened? Okay, so yesterday we made that high, almost $74. We came down, we closed side by side, lots of stuff, $72.75. I keep saying this every time, every day. If you guys trade these commodity type style uh, securities, they move on quarter increments, $72, $72.25, $72.50, $72.75, $73. $73 and a quarter, things like that. Same with gold. Um, and so when we came there, we came back, we broke. Look at all these wicks in this area. So there's a lot of lot of reactions uh, around this level, okay? So we're going to focus on 70, 71.85. There's like a wick here, a wick here, a wick here. Let's go yellow here as well. Okay, so change these colors. And what did we do? We broke, we came down. Here's a close of a candle, $71 and 25, 30 cents around here. Got to focus on that. We broke, okay? So that was our low of the day and we, we're coming up right now. So maybe we'll test this yellow line. We'll see, maybe we trade inside here. But if it continues to come back down and oil breaks the low of the day, oh man, sub 70, okay? $69 and 80 cents. And then that's about 50% of this big bullish candle. So anytime like below there or anything, I give myself a heads up that maybe there could be some demand waiting to buy oil at just a below $70 a barrel. Um, so now we're coming right back up slowly, but we still have, <clears throat> excuse me, we still have a lot of bearish volume in that body that maybe this is just a daily pullback and then it might come back down. So let's go to the hourly, see how the hourly candles are moving. So it's been on a big push down since 5 a.m., 6 a.m., 7 a.m., news pulled it back, pushed down, continuing Wall Street all the way down where it made the low of the day. And now these, look at the thin body hourly candles. Okay, they're starting to get a little bit exhausted. They're consolidating inside here. Um, so let's take a look at what's going on on the fives. So look how tight the five minute candles are really trading, okay? Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna trap this entire area from this daily to this daily, we'll keep this area neutral. Hello. 
And so we found a bottom here at the daily low. Okay, so there's a little bit of a base of support there that we can see. We're building a little bit of support below here as well. There was a couple impulse moves that didn't really break. Okay, so we're going to see maybe we'll form another double bottom. Maybe we're going to come up. And if we start to break oil out of here, this looks like a good potential buy. That's building above here. And this too, okay, so I want, I want to show you as well, okay, if you want to scalp these markets and you kind of want to be, um, and, you, and you kind of want to scalp for maybe 10 pips, like you, there's a lot of scalpers who just scalp for those type of moves, okay, so this is more of the conservative trade up here, above closing above a daily, like see all these five minute candles that came up here, rejected, came up, rejected, came up, rejected. Look how many times it's been rejected up here today. But we've penetrated through this area. So if it breaks through here and comes up there, I kind of measure that move. Like if I'm scalping from there to there, it's about 20 pips, okay, up to there, 20. Okay, not, not, not 50, not 200, 20. Uh, minus your spread, minus some slippage. So that's where some traders get into those type of trades and they look for 10, 15, 20 pips. Sometimes when you get it and it's a big body that breaks out, you're rewarded. But sometimes um, you get caught and it pulls back. So that's why you got to know if it's coming up there, you got to make a decision. Because all of these buyers, if they didn't make decisions, they got caught up there. If that's way too um, aggressive for you, stay up there. Okay. And then also we're going to watch for maybe a potential push down here, clo a close, and then to come down to maybe down to $71, and we'll see what happens there. Maybe it comes back down to that double bottom low. Okay, and then I also put like a red line at physical five minute structure that maybe it could come down and there could be like a initial TP down to there. Okay, so we'll continue watching this. Oil is continuing to push down. Okay, so let's be patient as well. I'll keep these two side by side, oil and gold. They look pretty similar actually, the way how they're moving. These charts are available in the zoom, guys. Okay, so we got four charts, guys. Let's go back to Okay, now at US 30, we're building, going into 1 p.m. It's building these bids, okay? So have we exhausting a lot of selling pressure? Okay, so let's watch what happens at 1 p.m. We're uh, just, we're one minute away, okay? So new hourly candle, it brings in new volume into the market. What we could see is maybe like an impulse break to the high. It could retrace right back down. It could get rejected right in this red box area and come down bearish, but, um, just got to be careful, okay? It's a new hourly candle, um, brings in volatility, be ready. I know some of you guys are already in trades, but let's be ready for this. Fifteen seconds, and then we're getting that new hourly candle. Okay, so here's the open. This is the new hourly candle. So do we have like a big block of bids in the market? Not really. It's kind of, you know, normally we see like 50 bids in, in the market. Um, so there's no real, it's just balancing itself out today. You can't really see any big block orders. Um, there is just up here 25 offers at 33,400. <clears throat> So we're going to watch, guys. Try and watch the depth of market if you can, too. Maybe you might spot like a big order um, pending in the market. 
Let's see gold and oil, how they opened. Okay, so gold is still holding a nice uh, extended double bottom here. Okay, so it might push. It's testing the daily area. It might break out and go from 2016 possibly to 2018 back up there. And it will test this supply area. But it's still, if you're in a buy on gold, it's building nicely, a nice little higher low double bottom, ready to possibly break out. Gold looks um, looks good, but we got to break out and close above this daily area. Oil is building as well. And let's see the Dow. Slow day on the indices this afternoon. But we can't force trades. I want everyone to understand that. Um, if there's no trades, there's no trades. Okay, You guys got to learn that as intraday traders or scalpers or swing traders, whatever you are. If you're waiting for a position, you got to wait. There's no point in just hitting a buy and sell button and we just hope that it's going to go in this direction. How many of you guys trade with the hope and prayer strategy? You buy and then you just hope and pray that it's going to go there. Okay, I, I used to do that when I started trading. I would get into a trade and just pray that it would go into profit. <laughs> so that's not the best way that's not the best style that's not the best way how to trade the casino strategy never fails <laughs> no uh, we don't want to do that guys gold is moving yep gold is pushing yeah so let's see if gold also if it can close above this daily area 2016 maybe if it pulls back and then then gold increases its bids in here might have momentum to get back up to 2018-19 up into here Okay, guys, so if you guys are in gold buys, it's building. Okay, so you see here, this block, it's a higher low from the bigger block. So that's good. So it's developing some good bids in here. And that's why it's pushing up for its next leg. But this is the previous area where it got rejected. So now, hopefully with some new volume, it can come back and maybe take out this and then continue to maybe 2020. Yep, gold is coming right up, guys. Beautiful. So it might come. We're going to see it hit this red red zone. And we're going to see, hopefully it can break for a new higher high. That's what this it has to do. Okay. So this is a big, beautiful candle starting at 1 p.m. But let's see if it can take out the high. Then it will possibly retrace. But then again, follow 50% of the liquidity in the body. And um, we're going to continue with this volume. Let's see what US 30 is doing. Okay. So very 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 choppy guys like there's absolutely like nothing we can do as a scalper unless you're picking a side like let's say you've decided you're gonna sell you're gonna sell place your stop loss here if you are decided you're gonna buy you buy you place your stop loss below there and this is the tug of war like there's no real confirmation but at some point someone is gonna get squeezed out of the market the buyers will get squeezed if this thing starts to break down here these sellers will get squeezed if the buyers can break it out here. Like yesterday, when we saw that bullish um, afternoon, the shorts got squeezed hard. So today, it's just trading sideways right now, but someone will be squeezed out of this market. But there's no real direction right now. It's building slowly, but not enough to take like a big position or... Um, where we can just wait and be patient and wait for it. Rio, yes, gold is moving. We can see it. Yeah, it's moving. Yeah, so it's got another ignited can. So watch for maybe a 50% pullback. Okay, maybe into this part of the body. Uh, if it can hold... Uh, um, right around here if it can hold this uh, maybe we'll come test the red line that I just put and if it can hold that liquidity maybe catch a wick and maybe try to take out that high up there okay careful for like also maybe a double top coming down too okay US 30 is starting to push down okay so what happened up here again lower high lower high lower high lower high so 
it, we're, the sellers are uh, pushing it down as well. Okay, so this is that fight where sellers are pushing it down, buyers are bringing it up, but we'll see if they can take out some lows down in here. So we're going to keep an eye also on this area now. Blair, are you here? Yeah, I'm yeah. here. I'm just trying to stay awake. Do you want to add anything? What's going on in the market? Or nothing. Anything? <laughs> nothing going on. Uh, aside from Netflix pumping, which is good for me, but other than that, nothing. <laughs> I'm just following spies, just hovering. Forward. Look at that, guys. Look at that liquidity grab. Okay, come down. Pick up the bids again and coming right back up. So the red came down. We broke the, the trend here, but it came down, picked up that liquidity and coming right back up strong. This It broke this low, but still higher than this one. So still, this is that, you know, the middle of the baseball game. We're now starting to get near the end of the game, but someone is starting to make a move maybe. Do I trade with the clouds on the charts? Like Ichimoku clouds? No, I don't. We can add um, moving averages if you guys want. Okay, some of you guys are familiar with the 9 EMA. That's the screen line here. So we're right at the 9 EMA. Okay, and let's add the 200 for maybe an overall move of the market. It's bearish. There's our 200 above us. It's right at that supply area. Um, let's add our 200 on Na uh, NASDAQ. It's right over here. Okay, so it's we're above the 200 on NASDAQ. If you guys do use those indicators, let's see what gold is doing. Okay, so gold came up, rejected. Did it hold 50% of this candle? Not yet. So now it's testing that daily again. So this is also like an M top inside of here. So it did come up. Did it take out a high? No. So it's coming down. So now we got to see, will it create a higher low? Will it come back down in here, pick up more? It's still inside this area. So it's not necessarily the best area to be trading, but you can get a nice scalp. Like if you bought this continuation move, it's, it's not bad. Like that candle at 1 PM is 20, 20 pips. You know, so it all depends on how you want to trade it. But if you're holding positions in here, you got to understand you're trading in a zone where it could just be trading sideways. So you might go up 15, 20 pips, might come back down to your break even. But if you leave a trade to breathe, like if you're in buys and you got your stop loss down here, you're not really worried about this, this, this stuff inside here because you got your stop loss down here and you're letting it breathe. You're letting it build for the bigger move. Oil is breaking down right now. Okay, so we're going to watch how oil, if it can close below. It's going to close in 30 seconds. Okay, so when we're breaking a critical area, this is the first candle that's like really breaking this entire zone. So what could happen is it could open green and come right back up like it's picking up bids right away when it opens. If it opens like ignited red, this could be like a candle ready to just shoot down. Okay, this is what we got to watch. How far, where is it going to close near the low? Here's the close. Okay, the low is right here, $71.10. Okay, so it's ignited right now. So it flipped. Let's see. No, see how it, it flipped up? So now we're going to get a wick. Okay, so let's see if they bring it back down or if it comes up green all the way to retest the official area that it broke. So the zone. I just flipped the color red now. So it's coming up green. Maybe 50% of the red volume will be the zone now. Where it used to be green here, green here. Now I just flipped it red to watch for the possible retracement. So now it's coming right back up. So we'll see if this thing can kind of get rejected. So here's the official retest coming up green. We close below. It opened kind of ignited for two seconds and then flipped. So there was no sell. Now we test what happens there. 
and maybe this is going to be a false break. If it closed red down here and this green one comes back up and closes inside here, then that's like a false breakout. It might come back inside this consolidated area. Therefore, that's not no sell with confirmation. Now it's starting to get rejected a little bit. But there's still a lot of time left on this candle, 3 minutes and 50 seconds. So it's building right now. Okay, so let's see uh, indices. Hey, again, trading right in this. It's not a good area to be trading, guys. I hope you guys understand that, okay? It's not, it's not the best area right now. Sometimes days are like this, okay? Not every day is going to be like yesterday. Okay, there's now an official rejection where we got rejected. The wick is pushing it down. So what we got to see is, can we exhaust this buying volume that's in the base of this candle? Because it's still building, it's still coming up. Okay, let's, let's, as you can see, NASDAQ is trying to break down. Okay, so we came back up. We're below the 9 EMA, but it could just come right back down here, pick up wicks and come right back up. So we got to look for some like official closes, like kind of how oil closed below the base. Is there any questions on oil right now? Like that big body candle that broke, closed below, but now it's coming up. This is the retest of the, the zone that we identified. Retest of also 50% of the volume of this bearish candle. Sometimes we may flag right below a, a particular area that we break, you know, like, and then it forms a flag down in here. Okay, might need to just continue to flag in here and then continue push down. So that's a nice rejection so far. We're thinning out the buyers near the end of the candle. Okay, there's two more minutes left to go. So let's see how this bar is going to close. Entry on oil should be at the breakout. If you if you took an impulse trade at the breakout, that's yes, you did that. But we were waiting for volume to close and give us the retest. So if you went on an impulse. That's what that's what an impulse trade is. We're trying to enter on confirmation now. Okay, so now we gotta continue to watch. We broke kind of this pennant formation that was happening inside this consolidated zone. Okay, so it's 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 pushing down. So I went Nasdaq breaking down now. So let's take a look if we can officially break this level and um, like break, yep, yeah, break below this low, 33,220. Here is, okay, here's the push down now. Okay, we kind of want to take out this low. And then it's probably going to get bid right back up. There's going to be a wick there. So it's going to close also in 45 seconds. Keep an eye on oil, guys, if you're watching oil too. Okay, so picked up a bid, pick up the bids, coming right back up. So trapped sellers down there again, so it's not ready yet. Um, oil is still inside here, okay. Let's watch how oil will close. Gold came back down, so maybe an M pattern. Testing right here again, the neckline. Big rejection, okay, so it's what type of candle is it going to close as? It's a pin bar, okay. So let's see the next, okay, they gapped it up. Maybe this is going to be a quick liquidity grab. Watch, see if it gets rejected fast. It's also a bullish ignited bar. So this one might be giving us a clue that it's going to come up. But if it gets rejected hard and they break the low, get ready. This thing could turn into a shooting star candle ready to break. But it's bullish holding ignited body. So if it comes back up here, there's no sell. Wow, these indices are just toying with us. <laughs> they, are, they are physically toying with us. So they came right down, pick up a wick, bullish candle coming right back up. I thought we were getting ready to break. Not there yet. Okay, 
nor maybe waiting for power hour. Uh, could, yeah, could be, but maybe also 1.30, 2 p.m. We still have some big, big, big candles coming too. It's 1.15 right now, so yeah. But do you guys see, guys, it's sometimes, unless you're kind of selling up here and you're buying the bottom. If you're just playing this area, you can do that, okay? You can absolutely trade like that. If, if the book is kind of balanced and it's just going up and down, up and down, and you're happy with grabbing 10, 15, 20, 30 pips on those kind of moves, like like right here, I'm just showing this move right here. It's about 30 pips, okay? You can also scale someone, and I believe was asking about one minute. Yes, if you get comfortable trading one minute candles, you can definitely trade one minute candles. We're gonna do that one time with you guys. We're gonna do some one minute scalping on YouTube, but um, really want you guys to be focused, to learn like m more so how to do it on five minutes because one minutes are very, very fast. Let's check out oil. Okay, so oil, no sell. This could be an e a, a morning star pattern. Here's our big red candle. There's our star in the middle where they broke the low and now they're coming up with a big bullish engulfing candle. Okay, so this is a morning star pattern could form into. Maybe this was just a fake break of the low coming right back in. So did I sell? No, I didn't. I was looking for a sell. I was looking right there when it got rejected coming down, but this gapped up candle gave me a clue. When they gapped it up, ignited, we just did our, our uh, webinar on these type of candlesticks. So how can we sell a bullish ignited candle? So it came all the way up here. Maybe it needs to get rejected so again, again, and then maybe push down. But oil, it's, it's strong, coming right back into this box right now. So that's a false breakout. Do you guys understand that? Do you guys know why I didn't take a sell there? Did I make that clear? Or I was looking, 100% I was looking for a sell, but it just didn't really meet criteria when it came down here. The, I thought this candle was gonna close and then maybe small pull back and then reject and then go down. So these little things, this is what destroys retail traders. They see this big red candle. Someone in the group just asked um, like on impulse to take that. If you did, you got to understand if you're taking an impulse candle, like that's why, you, that, that's why we started pip and dip. If you take that, it dropped 14 pips, minus one or two for your spread, but you could have got in that red cell, five, seven, nine, 10, 12 pips. And if you do not get out of that market, this is what happens, okay? So you have to ask yourself, are you a scalper? Are you looking to scalp bars? Like what I mean by bars, are you looking to scalp individual candlesticks or are you looking to hold positions? Okay, that's the, that, these are the questions that you need to ask yourself. So, because when I take an impulse candle, I know exactly what I'm looking for out of it. Like even here, where I show, if this is an impulse candle breaking from here to here, I measured the move. I know it's about, what was it, 15 pips? 20, yeah, 15 to 20. It could just be a big green candle that breaks out of here, and then it comes up here and catches a wick and goes right back down, like this. This candle here was green, came right up here and got rejected. So sometimes you gotta know what you're looking for, so it's no surprises. And when you don't know, don't take the trade. It's very, it's that simple. If if you're not sure about this, don't take the trade. And then wait after the fact. Look after. And maybe you, you'll see. You'll save yourself a trade. Gold, what's gold doing? Okay, it's just trading in between 2018, 2015, 16 in here. It's building, okay, pattern. It's coming back up. Maybe it's going to come back up stronger. Okay, this was like, it, M's turn into W's and W's turn into M's. It just depends on what leg we're looking at and which and which leg is stronger. So it's still holding this, this area. It could be now another double bottom forming or a triple bottom, one, two, three. If you're not trading in this area, you don't need to get anxiety or anything like that. You're not missing out on big trades. Yeah, you missed out on one leg here, one leg there, but you gotta ask yourself, if you took this leg, where you're gonna cash out? Like if you sold these red candles and it came down there for 18 pips, how, would you be out of the market right now with 18 pips or now you got a pullback coming back up to 
where you kind of sold. So the, if you if you if you if that's not the type of trader you are, then don't worry about what's going on in here. You need to worry about the bigger moves above here or below here. Now let's look at oil. Okay, so it came up here. It's a lower high, continuing red. Maybe if it can close again below 50% of that green candle, below this targeted area, maybe then we might start to um, trade back in this bearish consolidated box and then break down. Okay, so the market is just moving sideways right now. Everything, everything is. It's just one of those afternoons. Yoda? Okay, but now we're pushing down, okay? So now let's watch the close of uh, US 30 down into here. Okay, so we got tweezer lows equal lows. This is the the, the most 2,220. I'd like to break that low if we can. That's yeah, coming down now. Okay, so but we've got a big pool of bids sitting right here at 288, 285, 52. Let's see if they kind of get taken out. Okay, they just added to 54. Okay, taken out. They got taken out of there. Okay, so what we got to do now is break the low. I'm going to watch how this body closes in the next two and a half minutes. And then we have some offers, big block right here, 51, like right by the VWAP just in case it pulls back. Okay, the pullbacks are the wicks. Mo, so with the oil morning star pattern failed, um, just one second, I'll get to it in one second. I just wanna watch how this body is gonna close here on US 30. Break. <sighs> Alliance by, by the 41, or sorry, 411.50. I think you can go down to 411. Okay, so another equal low right down at that daily, that yellow line. Okay, it's tapping that daily line. I'd like to see an official real break. Then it will shake up the order book a little bit. And we're going to start to see some fun going into 130. We're five minutes yep. away. We may get it right here. Okay, there so here's go. the Come official on. break, guys. We're breaking. Okay, so if you're an impulse trader, this is an impulse candle breaking. It's going to actually close in 30 seconds, so I'm looking to see the close, the retest. If there is one, it might be a bullish candle come right back in the box. We got it could be like like how oil faked out. Okay, it's testing that previous low. It's right at that red line. Okay, now we just broke it. Okay, so we have an official break of structure. It broke the previous low over here. At 11.30, here's the candle, okay, ignited now. Let's see if it can break the low, firecracker right here, no. Okay, turned green, flicked. Let's see if it comes back up now, or if it can hold a little bit below here, and then take out that low, and we can sell. Okay, see these 34 bids still holding? I'm watching here too, if, it, if they get pulled, yeah. Okay, look at the candle, how it flipped now. If it can take out that low. Right there, get ready. Okay, no. See the wick? Can you? Are you guys watching here the book too? And then maybe 130 we'll get our move. 
on my end, I got spy at the uh, EMA fifty. Okay, get ready, guys. For, for, sorry, Blair. I'm I'm just getting ready for a sell. Get, sorry, go ahead, Blair. No, as I was going to say, oh. I have the EMA fifty on spy being tested right now on the five minute. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it just again, it's doing what oil did. It broke. It didn't take out a new low. But we broke a previous low. Now it's coming for the retest. Maybe we're going to see, can it come up to 50% of this red body going into 130? Okay, there's 50% of it. It may flag now, like in this area right over here. There's 50% now. Okay, it's coming up to 50 right here. Oh, today you got to be very patient, guys. Okay, I'm, I'm looking for a trade. Believe me, I am. I've been trading throughout the entire day myself. Um... I'm looking for a trade just like you guys, but you got to be patient. You guys see, like, if we took that, we would be holding in drawdown right now. Guys, this is also education. You guys got to learn this, too, because some of you guys get caught with these type of trades. Are you guys learning why I held off on buying that, why I held off on selling oil as well? Okay, now oil came all the way back down, coming back up. So here's that flag. We're back in that flag. Oil could potentially start to break. Now, if you do, if you take a sell on oil, I would place stop loss like above some structure over here. You can start to lower uh, this area down to here. But I'm going to really, I'm following this US 30. Um, um, also, with the morning star pattern failed. Sorry, Mo. Let's see. So the morning star pattern came up here. Yeah, it failed. So like an official morning star pattern, this bullish candle it should have closed and engulfed this big bearish uh, bar right here. So it wasn't technically an official morning star pattern because it didn't close above and engulf this bar. And then the big red candle kind of um, closed that idea of a morning star pattern forming up here. So we had the official retest, 50%. So if it breaks, guys, this could be a nice sell opportunity for, for oil. Okay, it's coming down a bearish bar. <laughs> chopped those buyers came up 50% and could be breaking down so if it's like a shooting star candle breaking you could look for a sell I would recommend placing your stop above this red box or above into this red box if you can um, so you're protected just in case it pulls right back up taps you out then goes down give it room to breathe and let's see if oil can break down down into here And US 30, okay, I see they swept the, the bids down there, came in there, came right back up. So we've got to watch that. Watch oil too, guys, if you guys are watching that. And we will watch um, these indices going into 130. Um, one more minute. Make sure if you're trading oil, you have good spreads. Don't be trading oil if your spreads are 5 pips, 7 pips with a broker. Do not be doing that, okay? Absolutely ridiculous. You need to trade oil if you have smaller spreads. And we'll watch US 30 over here. Okay, we have to be careful with the US 32 because look at the bigger picture. Okay, the big bottom, this is the huge neckline, and it could come down, like down to here or here. And, you know, maybe they grab some, some liquidity here and then they come right back up and could be building for this afternoon for that bigger break. Or, or we just trade sideways inside here for this afternoon. But we opened red, 130, new 30 minute candle. Okay, open red, came 50% down. Now it's coming right back up. This is where now you got maybe it could be like a three bar play where it's ignited red looking to take out these lows and then it's like a impulse break where it's a volume filled candle breaking through here so we're coming right back down 
Are we guys, are we watching the book up here? Okay, how many, where are the big offers? Again, they're right by the VWAP. We've got some big bids now building below here. Bigger bids, 33, 44, 15. Starting to get a little heat in the market. Okay, now that's a big rejection. Let's get ready, guys, okay? Okay, get ready. We're going to possibly come down, and this could be a three-bar break and drop red down in here. Okay, so we've got to take out those lows. Not there yet. Holy, they're, they're holding this market today really well. Nope, not there yet. Oil, guys? Yeah, oil is nice. I'm going to take a sell on oil. Okay, I'm jumping in on oil. Sell. I'm going to go in. I'm going in on a sell right now. Gold is losing its support right here. So it may come down to this bigger green box. We'll see if it can come in here and go back up. If it can tap in here and gold comes up, then I'll be looking for a buy above 2015. I'm watching this US 30 in this, in this box right over here. Nothing, no sell yet. It's got a wick, higher lows. Okay, let's see if this, now we can get some volume on oil to push down into here. Also to close below this box again, there's gonna be a, possibly a pullback, okay? But we gotta let it breathe in this consolidated area. Is bouncing off the EMA 50 and off the uh, uptrend. Okay, so no sell down there, guys, yet. We've got to wait for it to come back down to us. This is where sometimes I get like aggressive scalping, like above that daily, and then I look for buys above here to take it back up. But I don't want to do that this afternoon. I just don't like this type of volume today so we have to be extra safe today it's a very very slow consolidated market where there's a lot of fake outs there's a lot of fake outs today okay um, i'm happy that you guys can see all this look at all the fake outs to the high today fake outs to the low today lots lots of fake outs i hope this oil is not going to be a fake out down here too <laughs> Okay, so we close strong on that five minute bar. I'm hoping that's gonna be a small retracement, small wick, and then take out this five minute line, um, take out this $70.95. But there's gonna be a possible pullback. Maybe I'd like it maybe to hold 50% of this red bar. We can hold below that. And then maybe we can get some more offers coming in the market for oil to drop it down. Let the US 30 build, okay? If we let it build, 
and then continue to come up, maybe we'll catch a move at 2 p.m. or, or get ready for um, getting ready for power hour. But the markets are slow. We don't want to force too many trades. When is, when is power hour? Um, it's at 3 to 4 p.m. Eastern. It's the last hour of the New York Stock Exchange. Um, so there's a lot of vo volume trading that last hour. Okay, so that's a nice rejection at basically 50% of that red candle. So we just need to, again, go through the motions. Exhaust these buyers. Maybe come down and take out this low, this red line. It's a critical area here where we had these body-to-body -body continuation. Um, because here's like maybe we can push down, come all the way down, and then could be that official double bottom. But you and I um, selling maybe could get some good pips coming down here. But if this starts to be like a higher low, then it could come back and trade in here. But that's why I'm giving it room to breathe. My stop loss is kind of above the previous supply area. I don't normally like trading oil at this time of day, but this is when we do multi-charting, I trade everything. But that's a nice rejection, okay, so that's beautiful. I'm just following price action, like, like I'm not really, do I care about what the security I'm trading? Um, I've traded oil quite a bit too in the past, so I'm very familiar with how it moves, but I'm just following price action that's a beautiful rejection nice shooting star candle coming down but now we got to kind of push down with that higher time frame volume so i like to look at maybe the 15 minute candle now while i'm in a trade okay so 15 minute candle here one o'clock came down 115 it came all the way back up picked up that push down closed near the low so this is the candle that i'm trading this 15 minute candle it's got that short rejection and pushing down so i'd like to see if this 15 minute volume on oil can start to take out um, maybe this 15 minute bodies down to here. So 70, this will be another um, targeted area down into here, if it can get down here. Okay, so it's a nice 15 minute candle, but there's still six minutes left on this one to go. So the markets are just, just slow right now. Man. US 30 is building back up, NASDAQ building back up. Okay, so if it's gonna build, let's let it build. It's coming right back up, okay? So this was a false break. They took out the low. They took out one low, but it held 50% of this body here, so it's still strong. So we'll revisit this area at another time, but right now, nothing. Okay, so now it's coming right back again. We're trading in this consolidated zone, but we have to note that it came down there and picked up more bids and continuing to come back up. And when it's a slow market like this, guys, we cannot, I can't change the volume. I would love to, but I can't change it. I wish I had the ability to. So we just got to continue trading what the market gives us. And that's a, that's a nasty candle on my part for oil. I think NASA is trying to uh, complete a uh, inverse head and shoulder. If it breaks uh, 410, we could probably see uh, 13, 470. Yeah, it's taking forever to build today. <laughs> and uh, SPY held that EMA 50, and it's bouncing back over the EMA 20. It's just ranging between this 412, 411.
guys I'm still holding my oil cell okay my stop loss is above here um, that could be like there, there could be a fake buyers came in there bought up and then it's gonna come back down and close below here I hope it does and then continues to drop through here but I gotta I gotta also watch this big bullish candle came down if it holds doesn't break it's gonna come back up so I kind of got to watch oil as well look at look at look at like the what they're doing um, coming right back up right back down coming up to the VWAP so you see how we're we've just been hugging this VWAP for the past what time did we start this call 12 it's been almost an hour and a half 90 minutes of just trading sideways of just accumulating at this VWAP on both sides Oil, you guys have a three pip oil spread. Um, some traders have a little lower, like mine fluctuates from 1.2 to 1.6. Three is not bad, but there is, uh, you can get lower. MFF two guys, as sometimes, like in London, it's zero. Um, guys, big break, look at, okay, big break on US 30 over here. Big break, okay, this could be that push down that officially comes down now with volume we're two and a half minutes away from a new 15 minute candle that's it that's important too so let's look also on the 15 minute candles of dow and nasdaq big k2 big rejections on the 15 minute candles in the last 30 minutes we broke a low so if this one comes down if we get this red volume to close below that daily yellow Okay, remember the daily yellow line? That's a critical level. So if we get 15 minute volume to close below that yellow line, maybe we can catch maybe a retest on a five minute candle and could, could see it drop coming down to um, this hourly or this next daily. But you see how it's most of the volume on, on these time frames, they're hugging this daily area. Right here, here's the, that yellow line. Yeah, Mohanad, five pips on five pips on oil is not a good spread. Not for scalping. Okay, maybe if you want to do a swing trading, like you like to hold for hours, that's that's okay. But not for scalping. No, if you have that, you shouldn't be trading. You shouldn't even be looking at oil, unless you're swing trading. Okay, look at guys, big bearish candle. Okay, let's see how we're gonna close now in the next 60 seconds, and then we have a new 15 minute candle opening the market too. Okay. Is anybody in any trades on US 30 uh, or NASDAQ right now? Anybody speculating? Anybody in going into this next 15 minute candle right here? Sell on NASDAQ, some of you guys? Okay, let's let's see for a, a nice close down here. This is a strong candle. Be prepared in case the next candle that opens comes up in a pool of bids and maybe comes up but what we're looking for is to come up into these offers um, or and below this VWAP we could also get an ignited bar too so you have to be prepared for this coming as well a big body candle closing possibly right near the low okay tapping this this yellow line right here that's where we had those big bids in the market. Okay, here's the ignited. See if it pulls back. If not, then yeah, sell. I'm going to sell. I'm entering a sell on US 30 right now. And I'm going to hope that it holds this ignited head and can push down a little bit here. And it may come down to that hourly. And if it can break, come down to here. Okay, we're taking out some bids down here. We don't have too many big block bids. We've got a big offer here at 53. So if it pulls back, hopefully that offer absorbs the, the bids. OK, 
okay beautiful nice pull back yes there we go okay pushing down it's, it's it came up it refueled more offers and pushing down let's see if we can take it yes there we go boom there we go zero drawdown guys there it is hell yeah guys go to a break even if you can or scale out yeah <laughs> guys ignited bars webinar yesterday beautiful okay I don't know what you guys look for pip wise but this move is 20 plus 22 let's go 25 yep 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 let's go 30 Woo -woo. <laughs> yes yeah 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 right down to the daily fill <laughs> oh 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 how many of you guys ate on this candle 40 pips guys full body full body right down to the daily kiss oh <laughs> breaking still let's go for 50 why not Blair where are you oh ooh, 60 nasty oh <laughs> I, t I told the group spy will go 411 before it goes to 413. Guys, I banked 50 pips on that. 50. I'm, I'm, Normally I'm, I go for 15, 20, but 50 on a good lot size, my friends. I'm yes. waiting for Nas to uh, complete this right shoulder. Mohanad, you got 30. Good job. Good job, guys. Okay. We waited patiently. How long did we wait for that candle? How long, guys? Almost what? Two hours? Almost two hours. But that's what we wait for, those full body candles. Beautiful, guys. If you're running a trailing stop loss, run a trailing, run a break even. This thing might run a little more, guys. Um, real <laughs> shit. And oil is breaking too, guys. I'm still in oil. Oh, my goodness. Guys, did you see how the book broke down? Kingsford, you made 270. My man, good job, bro. Chris, you got 40 pips. Good, good, guys, good. Guys, but please, you know, um, manage your own trades, okay? Um, that, <laughs> that, was a, that was an execution-style snipe, guys. That's yesterday's webinar, guys. Please, did you guys understand what I was talking about yesterday? How we closed, how this transition, that pullback. We still ha ha held the head of the ignited candle. We added fuel and then just... But we caught the 15-minute breakdown, this... So we entered on the five, but look at the 15 minute candle. It was all 15 minute volume that took us down there. So guys, very, very nice. And oil, oil is moving as well too, guys. <laughs> also oil is moving into profit. Okay. I'm going to a break even on oil right now. Oof. Beautiful, Miss Jones. She is so sexy. Colby, big 50 pips, my man. Good job, J J Joe Gold, 50 pips. Good, guys. You guys are killing it on YouTube. Good. Guys in uh, YouTube, or, um, Zoom, are we are we eating over here too? We, today was a big day, uh, big buffet of pips in all sessions. Dave destroyed New York. Guys, we got these afternoon pips. Yoda, what's going on with Spy? Naz, where are we going? Uh, Naz is still in a range. I think it's going to test this bottom of the range for a uh, potential right shoulder inverse head and shoulder bounce. Excellent, guys. So did you see what how, what happened in the book? Okay, look at the imbalance now. Look at the offers taking over. This is the imbalance in the market now. Remember where we were just balanced? This is what we look for. And we're just destroying all these bids right now. Look at all the offers coming in and just destroying everything. Look at another ignited bar continuing. Oh my God, 80 pips, guys. <laughs> oh Aaron you got that trailing stop and you're eating my man get steak and lobster for yourself tonight bro guys sorry I get excited okay I'm just I'm like a kid in a candy store okay? <laughs> you know how how like that was a sniper entry like nailing that ignited head of that candle it was you know how much drawdown I had nothing that's why, oh man, those are nice trades when you get them. And then when sometimes when you go a little bit bigger lot sizing, it's it's worth that. 
It takes all the anxiety. When you can go into 10, 20 pips right away, and then you go to a break even, like it's easy to trade the candle. But um, I get excited, guys. Some say, Ron, how do you still get excited after 20 years trading? I love it. I love this adrenaline. Um, it's amazing. But guys, I banked, okay? So you guys need to manage the rest of your trade. It could come right back up to bids. It could come up to this daily. It could come up to, now we got to locate 50% of that big bar. Okay, what did we do in structure? We took out this low right here, came down, but there's big bids coming in at this daily now. Might bring it right back up. This is pullbacks in the market. Um, but what we got to do now is continue our work, okay? That was just one trade. But you could be done for this afternoon. How long did it take us to hit that? Well, an hour and a half, an hour and 45 minutes. But do you guys understand what if you were trading in here, this is garbage, okay? Eventually, they'll redistribute that volume. They tried right here, but that, you know, that's where we didn't bite there. And then when it came back up, there was that nice double top with that big volume-based candle that closed below, and it closed near the low, ignited, ready to go. So there's no questions. There's, like, when you, it, now, do you guys understand conviction was high on this candle? Guys in, in, in YouTube, do you understand, you know, when I say, like, conviction, like, uh, inside here, ah, we're kind of, we're not, we don't know what's happening, but with this one, do you guys understand, like, that pattern, how all this happens? Conviction should be high. Like, this should be a sell all day, every day. Emmanuel, 4,000 today, 4 for 4. Congrats, bro. That's huge, guys. Emmanuel in our group, 4 for 4 today for $4,000 unbelievable bro god bless man okay so let's now 50 percent okay if we're marking 50 percent of that base of that candle probably right now we're testing it right around here okay sorry guys i'm i gotta look at my oil trade too okay look at oil oil is coming down to a tp2 guys 30 pips okay i sold in here this candle my stop loss was this red box Yes, <laughs> another 30 pip banger coming down, guys. Okay, anybody take oil as well? <laughs> it's a beautiful pullback candle coming down into here. That's that That's that entire zone right here. It might dip down into this green box, but that could be bids and reverse. But if you're at a break even or you're scaling out, that's a 30 pip move coming down, filling this zone. Ooh, it's a nice shooting star candle too. Uh, the daily purple is right here at seventy dollars and sixty-eight cents. A Hicks, you caught that too. You caught a, a good. Oh, <laughs> there it is, guys. Okay, it kissed that daily purple for thirty-five pips. I'm out. Okay, this is unbelievable. I've I've banked over a hundred. Like, I'm I'm good. Okay. I gotta lose weight eating all these pancakes. Beautiful, okay? I'm out of that trade, full transparency, guys, okay? If you guys are still in, please manage it. You gotta go to either a break even or a trailing stop loss or continue holding this thing. And I hope that it can break this low for you guys and this shit can drop. Okay, but I'm good. That's it. I, I... Okay, let's get back into the charts, guys, okay? So, US 30. We came down 33,200 psychological area. That's where the bids came in, but it could be a pullback. Okay. It could be a pullback because now look at where the offers, the big offers, the big fight over here. So they're going to fight in this area. 50%, the bulk of the candle is right here. So there's going to be a fight now. Okay. So, you know, when I was using a baseball analogy here, it was four, four in the fifth inning. Now it was Joe Carter, 93 bases loaded world series. <laughs> two run home run and the Jays win right here. So final score Jays Blue Jays win Ball game over Sometimes you hit singles and doubles or you're gonna hit a grand slam once in a while This was a grand slam that that candle was 80 pips. Okay, normally we're looking for singles and doubles 10 20 pips here and there, but once in a while we'll hit a grand slam 
And that is a grand slam for a five minute candle. You can't get any better than 80 pips with, with no drawdown. Doesn't get any better than that, guys. Okay, so hopefully everybody had a good session, guys. Um, we're continuing going. <laughs> I'm not getting off here, but I'm just going to take a break um, in like five, ten minutes. I'm going to go have uh, a little smoke and uh, we'll come back. We'll finish up the next hour. Blair, are you still here? I yeah, yeah. I, uh, <laughs> I was in a spy cell for some time. Now I'm in a spy by. Spy by. Brian, uh, Brian just said he made enough money to pay for his subscription for another 90 days with that one trade. <laughs> That's amazing, man. Um, so our, our, we can help you guys pay for the subscriptions here. That's our mission. That's our goal. We want to earn you guys pips. We help you guys. Signals too. Um, signals were amazing today too. You know, they're doing good, guys. But you also have to manage the signals, okay? It's not just a buy and sell. You have to watch what's going on, okay? We can help help with your education and things like that but we're not just a, like a signal group where it's just a buy and sell and you just go crazy and hit a buy and sell we want you to learn how to trade you don't you feel much better at the end of the day when you learned how to do something as opposed to someone doing something for you rav mm -hmm. did you take this candle bro rav Wow, look at this. Apple's okay. current market capitalization of about $2.7 trillion exceeds the entire market capitalization of the United Kingdom. Oh, wow. What is the, the bubble software? I love it. Okay, the bubble software. This is Bookmap, guys. We have a, a link on our description on YouTube. Um, if you click it, it's our official link, so it's not spam, it's not garbage. There's actually some promotions that they extend discounts to you guys if you guys really want to use this. I recommend a, a live liquidity platform. Bookmap is what we use. There's other ones out there too. Um, there's Quant Tower, there's various ones, but you all but you have to subscribe to Rhythmic. Okay, so Rhythmic provides the live liquidity, the data. Um, this is like you have to subscribe to a data feed, but then the platforms are different. This one, I mean, this particular platform is Bookmap, and there's other um, platforms as well. Um, so it is nice. You see how we can visually see more than what candlesticks show us. Like we, we follow candlesticks, like too. Um, so, but then when you add like this is like adding confluence another like kind of like an indicator to help us so when we get into that cell what forced me to hold this thing longer and longer and longer was just because the bids were just getting taken out of the market and the offers were increasing above us and that was that full body candle that we just milked and now if you don't get out this is what happens like this is why i want to tell you guys why greed will destroy you in these markets look at this heavy v recovery so it came down here picked up all these bids and it's coming right back up where we entered that candle so if you have a break even there goes your break even trade if you did not bank at least 30 40 50 60 70 80 pips unfortunately now you're sitting at break even and you're scratching your head do you know how many times this used to happen to me i scalp one minute candles in one minute i was up 80 pips and in the next minute it was a green candle coming right back up and i was in break even on in two minutes i could not believe how fast these markets move so this is why these markets humbled me guys i don't think anyone has scalped more than one minute candles on this on this in on youtube or what i'm on zoom i don't think there is i used to trade one minute candles literally for 24 hours a day um and i used to see that one one minute candle used to be 30 40 50 pips the next one minute candle came and liquidated me i could not believe how fast they were if you get a good move yes but when you get candles like that they can be filled up really quickly and now we have to watch this. Okay, this could be a huge V recovery coming back into this consolidated area. And what happens at power hour if we accumulate all of this volume and we're breaking out bullish today? So you've got to stay with the volume, guys. You've got to stay with it. Because NAS never broke down, right? So NAS is holding the market. Yep. Okay. So guys, and oil too. Okay. So oil tapped our purple daily low in, in the box. 
Okay, so same with oil. I scaled out. I took out my profit there. Um, now, if you're still in the trade, you see it's trading sideways. It's consolidating now, so it's cooling off. If it breaks this low, it's going to continue to break the low. We flip the box. Maybe oil is going to drop back down below $70.50. Maybe it's going to be a big double bottom here now where it came down, back up, came down. Maybe it's going to shoot back up. So you got to kind of readjust yourself as a trader. Sarah, you caught the buy on US 30? Nice. So you, yeah, very nice buy. So you know like order blocks guys okay so you know when we were talking about order blocks let me just show you one order block here okay i'm sorry that i didn't add this on the chart but um over here okay see this big bullish move this double bottom right here this morning at 10 o'clock and then that pullback kind of confirmed the big move that took out the high okay you know all of these different terms right now everyone's teaching you all these ch change of characters and all these other bullshit terms it's it, it, this move broke the high okay let's talk simple what's below us where is the good volume the base of the candle this candle that came down was red it came up and it closed almost like a hammer there's your body of the candle and look at the retest of these candles so oh shit i should have done this because we would have caught the buy um right over here okay see the big body right there do you guys understand what i just did right there okay if you don't know what i did there please say ron uh, what did you just do there Guys, this may help you guys in your trading. Does anybody understand why I placed a box right there? Forget the color of the box, okay? N just why did I place a box right there? Twisted? You got 2% today. Don't give anything back. Good, bro. Good. You got it. Consolidation, fair value, Mo. Give me these names. FVG, RAV, yeah, Demand Zone. Give me all these names, guys. If Everyone throw out the name of this box, okay? Everybody. And then we're gonna we're gonna clear everything up right now. Okay, we got we got POI, Kenny. Oh, yes, tell us what POI is. Point of interest. We got order blocks. I saw demand. I saw consolidation. I saw what else we got? Wall Street buy. Yeah, yeah, that's a Wall Street buy box. Guys, spit them out. Okay, we're gonna save everyone thousands of dollars right now on all these silly names for it. the Ricky Bobby box. Yes, you remember that from the other day, bro. The Ricky Bobby box. <laughs> So, okay, let's stop there. We got the Ricky Bobby box. We got a rectangle. We, you know what I call it? The corner trap, okay? The corner trap. This is your man on the corner in your local corner in your city. This is where he's sitting, okay? So remember supply and demand, okay? So it ran up here. There's something we want. We have, we, we, we want what is happening. We want US 30. We want Ms. Jones. We want her real bad. Like we are, we, so here started the big move so there's good volume this move maybe if it ever comes back here this person who wants to buy at a discount will buy again let's bring this all the way across and i hate doing this after the fact but this is what everyone is trying to sell all of these courses for this thing okay we do this all day every day okay this is the demand box where it pulled back that's demand so what happened? The, our big 80 pip candle came right into here, right in, and it actually broke, came down to the bottom. So this is our man on the street corner. You know, when you need something, he's always there. So it came all the way back down to a good, fair discount price. If we add, you know, Fibonacci's, okay? So this is where you can make your charts flawless. If you go from today's swing low, sorry, not that, but if we go use our Fib from our swing low, Where's my fib? My kids play with my um, um, my trading view all the time. Okay, so swing low to swing high today. Right now, this big red candle that came down hit tap this seven eight six zone. We broke the golden zone, came down to the next zone. It came down, but it's this big zone that's holding the market. Okay, so see how we came in there, and now it's going right back up. Okay, so if we had this. Um, on our chart, maybe it would have made it more visual where that we would have taken this entire candle down here and maybe we would have bought, not this candle, but maybe this candle would have been the buy above the 618 right now. See how it kind of closed, retested the daily and now we're popping. So um, I'll have this ready for us on our next charts, but I just wanted to explain, are we good with what this box is? Okay. It's, it's, um, 
It's not that difficult, guys. You just got to train your eyes to look for these things. Okay, so let me just, this chart is busy. Let me just get rid of uh, Fibonacci over here. Yes, there you go, Mo. So this blocks, this box now is mitigated. You got it because be, before it never got tapped. Okay, so you know those words, mitigated. Okay, so when when the volume was up here, it didn't it didn't mitigate this box yet. So when it came all the way down here, now we mitigated. Okay, this is now transactions occurring, lots of transactions, exchange. These sellers like you and I. When we close, well, I'll talk exactly for myself. When I close my position down here, I was selling close. I need to find a buyer, okay? So it's got to come where the buyers are waiting. The buyers are waiting in here. So I literally shook a hand with somebody and exchanged a position. I sold high and I got a buyback low. And the difference was what I made in profit. Now they bought from me and they're taking it right back up. So this is where the buyers are waiting. Our man on the corner is right over here. He's waiting. So this is like when we talk about the TV. If you buy a thousand dollar TV and that same TV next week is on sale for five hundred dollars, you're gonna buy it again. So in this area, now what we can do is bring it across for tomorrow, next week, and then see if it gets mitigated again. Because right now, first touch came down and respected. Maybe we come back down. Now maybe it forms a higher low at this daily. Maybe it forms a higher low at this hourly. And we're continuing to push back into this huge development over here to maybe get that huge breakout that's coming maybe um, today in power hour, maybe tomorrow. But you see now how it's forming the big double bottom, like a huge double bottom here. There's our neckline, all of this garbage inside here. And we came down back to that. Did it come for the higher low? No. So we held this type of block right here and it's coming right back up to here. So we're going to see if we can come back inside here, trade in here, and then we break out of here. Then we come all the way back up to this next supply box. But you got to be patient for these moves. Okay, they're not going to, today was a different type of setup. Yesterday was completely different. See how the markets are different every single day? But if you're patient, you can wait for these moves. Okay, uh, gold and oil. Gold. See, gold is horrible sometimes in the mid-afternoon, guys. Gold trades the best 7, 8, 9, 10 a.m. over here. Okay, look, look, 7, 8, 9, 10 a.m., how it trades. Uh, where are we? Seven. Nice bullish move. Eight retracement and the sell off coming over here at nine. OK, what do we got now in the afternoon with gold? This is what gold does in the afternoon. That's why you'll never see me trading gold in the afternoon. I'm always trading either US 30 or um, Nasdaq. OK, and what happened with oil? Are we surprised that it came to the purple low? I'm not. That's why I closed my position at 30 plus pips, because if you don't, it comes right back up. So again, oil came down where there was some demand. Look at again, this zone, this box right here. If buyers were interested today at 1030, why would they not be interested to come back in in the afternoon and get in on that discount again? If it's if it's just if we're holding in a nice little range, you're going to you're going to see opportunities. OK. Why didn't I? Uh, why didn't I? Um, why didn't I chart the shadow, the wick, on US 30? Um, down over here. Why didn't I chart these? Um, this shows me like the liquidity grab, where it came down red, 
and the bids were waiting big time in there. So this is, um, if you want to change, this is where these different names of these, these are called. So this is called, that's what they call the fair value gap. And then below this box over here, that's essentially what the demand zone is, okay? So it's just different words for all of these boxes down here. If you have another box there. So, and then some traders call it an order block, okay? So this could be the demand. This one right here could be, fair value gap and but just understand when it comes down here what it's really coming down here for that's the thing that we're trying to teach here understand why it's coming down here and whether this box is called fair value or this one's called the uh, anything Ricky Bobby box or this one's called who gives a shit what the names of these boxes are that's why I feel like you guys are missing out on so many quality trades because I had a one on one the other day and a gentleman missed out on a perfect trade. He had the chart better than mine. Like I would have taken 10 lots off of his chart. And I asked him, why did you not buy here? Because he said, this is uh, called this and this is called this. I'm like, but you, like, you just, you missed out on the best trade of the day because you were more concerned of what these are called. And that's what I feel traders are getting so confused with. You can call these things anything you want, but the main thing is just understand why, when it comes down here, why is it coming down to an area where buyers were interested and pushed it up previously? Those same buyers, just think about yourself. I love Jordans, okay? I probably love Jordans just as much as everyone in here. If I see a pair of Jordans that I normally spend two, three hundred dollars for, and those same Jordans, and they're real, they're legit Jordans, and they're on sale for a hundred dollars, I'm gonna buy 10 pairs of them. So. I, there's always going to be a demand. So if Jordan prices co ever come down to $100 here, there's going to be not just me, probably everybody on this call, we all have pending orders. You know when we have a, that's where I would actually have a pending order. I'm in here. If Jordans come down to $100, please call me and deliver them to my house. I will pay up front for them. So I'm a pending order in the market waiting. There's a lot of demand. Everyone on this call, probably all will buy a pair of Jordans for $100, right? So the demand is there. We're pending in the market. Now, all we got to wait for is that supply, those Jordans to come down to us. If the market makers can see there's a thousand people waiting for Jordans at $100 and they have excess supply, maybe they'll come down and give us a little bit. And then when it comes down there, then it will skyrocket again because of demand. That's kind of basic, simple supply and demand. And I didn't use any fancy words, okay? But again, everyone's going to knock me and say, Ron, oh, you're dissing this, you're dissing that. I'm not dissing anything, okay? I never traded with these words all of my life. So I'm just trying to say that I personally see, because I help mentor a lot of students, and I see that they're getting confused with the names of these things and not focusing on, on the real stuff that matters. So I'm just here trying to help everybody. Don't knock me because um, I'm, I'm smart money concept or ICT or this or that. I don't really give a shit about those things. I never really cared about those all my life. So why would I care now? I've been trading for 20 years before those thing, terms even existed. So now that they exist, it's no big deal for me. I'm not caught up in those names. And I'm not disrespecting any of those things. They're great, you know, but it's just I see that a lot of people are confused just with the names. Does that make sense, guys? I'm not trying to be rude or anything like that, but I really want you guys to understand that <clears throat> the liquidity, this stuff is the most important. The book, this is the most important. So see how the book is now balanced. Okay, let me go back to this. Okay, see now how the, the, the current order book right now, this is live, this is no BS. This is the current order book for the Dow Jones. See now how it's balanced. See how we have like an, it's right at half of my screen. So we have 50% offers and we got like 50% bids. But did you see when, when it kind of got imbalanced, when we were shorting down here, where all of the offers came all the way down, down to here, where there was barely any bids on the screen? That's the imbalance in the market. Now, the market is slowly balancing itself right back in the book. It came down here, there was the imbalance, and you and I caught it with that uh, 80 pip sell. Right there. Now, the market balances itself out and where are we right back? We're right back in the consolidation where it all started, right in here. Okay, so that's why sometimes you got to get in and out of these markets.
oh, you get the Jordan analogy now? Maybe a woman needs a, a shopping... Okay, Michael Coors purses. Um, okay, so Michael Coors purse. My wife likes those too. I know the cost of those things, and we've got to make a lot of pips to get those things. Um, or Louis Vuitton, okay? So, same thing. If there's a two, $3,000 Louis Vuitton purse, and it's, it's a real nice one, it's a real one at, at uh, Holt Renfrew, and they're for sale, and um, they come down to $1,500, 50% discount, I guarantee some of the ladies here would go and buy those with without even questioning the price. So it's coming in, giving you a nice discount. There's going to be a lot of demand for that purse, and but we gotta we gotta know where those pending orders are in the market, where those ladies are waiting to spend fifteen hundred dollars on a purse. Then when there's a whole accumulation of them, the supplier will bring down the purses right to you so that they can transact with you, and then we mitigate. <laughs> the fancy or, word we all mitigate together and what's that Blair what's the or we just fly to Europe and get it cheaper yeah <laughs> or you just yeah you go to Europe get on a flight go enjoy the weather go enjoy the food and get your purse down there okay guys um, yeah I didn't even get to go for a break but let's let's see over here okay so gold I know a lot of you guys love gold. I cannot, I can't, you guys love it, okay? So what are we doing? We're just trading sideways again. <clears throat> I'm going to remove this box. So we really got to watch this afternoon. If gold is going to make a move above 2016, above this daily, maybe we can look for buys above there. Otherwise, we're just trading sideways, okay? Is there enough range to scalp this thing? Not yet. Oil, okay, oil was a play where we took, well, I personally took a sell. What did it do? Came retrace right back up to here and then possibly pushing right back down. So let me just clean up oil over here. How's everybody doing? Is everybody okay? Okay. Did we get some pips? Did we learn a little bit too? It's more important that we're learning something. Okay. Are we we're learning new terms with SST? Do we understand pip and dip? Okay, that is, we need to know what pipping and dipping is. Make sure when you scalp, you know about pipping and dipping because not every single day is going to break down and the markets are going to continue to drop. Look at here. Okay, so we came up, lots of transactions happening in here. Another push down might come into the bids. So this is where they might trade a little bit sideways now. So let's just adjust our charts again, get it ready for maybe power hour. So if we're going to come into here, okay, and trade, this big red candle that, that drove this market down, let's, let's identify its box, okay? So the previous pullbacks were right up to here. And we have a lot of volume, that base of that volume, and 50% of it kind of right here. So if I'm drawing a red box, I'm going to draw it right down there. Okay, that's our big area of supply current in the market. Why? Because this big volume-based candle, we've been making lower highs the entire way, but this is the big one that closed below all structure. And it dropped, made a new low. Pulled back right into this red box, and now it's dropping again. Okay, so any buys, if we look at something, are going to be above here but you got to understand if we do that we're trading in the consolidated area so this might be those pips and dips okay if it breaks above here comes up to that high that's 20 pips then we come up to the official red box up here at 40 and then we'll see if we can break out of there for 60 and then a new high okay but if we're scalping inside here maybe 10 20 might come up here and trade inside here so we're going to watch that as well also um, this daily area, this is a really important area in the market. I'm just, I'm just um, removing a few things here, guys. Just cleaning up the charts. Okay, so maybe we want to focus now how it trades at this hourly daily area, if it can hold. This was that 50% area right here. This candle body closed and retested, so we're holding... Um, I want to see if it can hold this area at this daily here too. So I'm going to place this green to see if it can hold. 
like this pullback to see if it can hold. See these bids, 51 waiting in the pocket right here. If we can pick these guys up, 33,200 looks steady. Looks, look at, we got nice heat down there holding this low. So if it ever pulls back for that double bottom, that's right here. This is where maybe we, we maybe want to buy below here, right? We want to be below this big demand in the market. As long as it doesn't get pulled, as long as it's not a fake out. But what we want to kind of see is these increase. See now how we went 45 increasing and we want to watch these ones increase a little higher. Then we know that there's the bids are accumulating and getting stronger below us. So we, we tested this box, it's holding. So if we ever come back into this big box, those are those big big bids waiting to get filled. You know, again, if those if the Louis Vuitton purse comes back down to $1,500, this is where all the ladies are waiting inside here. But it could come down with a ton of supply and break this level. Let's say there's only 100 women waiting for that purse and 200 purses are coming down and then it breaks, it's going to come down and then for those ladies that are waiting at, to buy it at $1,000, it's going to trigger you guys. And maybe someone's going to get lucky buying a Louis Vuitton for $500 down there. And that's that last liquidity wick. That's that last one that comes down there and gets those lucky people with those pending bids down there. And then it just drives right back up. So I know it's, that's not a banking analogy, what we just used, but maybe people can understand that way. When I'm trying to teach my wife how to trade, that's how I teach her with trading purses. And then inside here, then this is the area where maybe the, the, the market is just going to trade sideways. It's going to accumulate and it's just going to bounce from an area of resistance and bounce to an area where there's support and just like a ping pong up and down like playing tennis. It goes up, comes down, goes up, comes down. If you want to trade inside this area, you absolutely can, but you got to know the range. If it's 20 pip range, that's what it is, 20. That's why you got to factor in everything. You got to factor in your um, spreads, your slippage with your broker. It doesn't make sense to trade in here. If it doesn't, then you got to be patient. You got to wait for the next move. Okay, so now I'll remove that white line since we're trading in this box here. And then if we do break below this low, that's where the market could potentially sell and break this and drop. Okay, but right now we're going to still see if it can hold. Maybe this is going to be a, a nice little double bottom forming, getting ready for 230 in the market. NASDAQ is still building. Okay, so that was just a fake break, but it was a nice move with Miss Jones where we got that. And NASDAQ came right back, popped it right back up. So if you're an aggressive scalper too, you can look, maybe take a trade above that daily yellow line to take it up to the supply. If you don't feel comfortable, you, you again, got to wait up here. Look at the bids now developing, okay? So 33,200, I'm going to place a yellow line there. We're going to remember that, okay? So that's where the, he was showing nice heat. This is resting demand in the market. These are pending orders that are waiting to get triggered, okay, at this area. And we have new level here of heat, this pullback. Look at all the exhaustion of the sellers. Remember before we were using that word exhaustion, sellers are getting tired. Okay, so it makes it easy for buyers to sense weakness and bring it back up. So good structure building here at 33, 260, 255. So what we're trying to do now is break this area of resistance. And this is where it is, this red box. We're looking to break out of here. We, but we don't want to just say break impulse, because if we do, we're breaking out to the VWAP and breaking out to 45 offers up here. So it could just break out, catch a wick, and come right back down. That's why we've got to watch what time is it? It's 224. We're leading into 230. We're building nicely. Or maybe it's going to break out of here, and we'll have maybe a nice push to the upside. Does that make sense, guys? Does that help traders understand what's going on in the market? Almost 300 viewers on YouTube, guys. If you can hit a like, if you guys got some value out of today, let us know. Like we do, we do appreciate you guys. Um, but it takes a lot of hard work to do this. It's, it's, I don't know if you guys know, it's 26 degrees, sunny, beautiful outside for me. And I'm spending my entire afternoon with everyone here. So I do appreciate you guys. But all we ask for in return is a like on the YouTube channel. That's all we ask. Thank you, guys. OK, 
Okay, so we might have to wait it going into the next 30 minute bar. Okay, so we can see how it's developing on the lower time frames, but then we can we can watch what happens on the big bars. Okay, and you might get an impulse break. It might be a big green candle that breaks out of here and then get rejected. That's one scenario. It may break out and close above, retest, and we're driving. It might not even break here. It might open red and come right back down. Okay, we're still in this box here. Today was an awesome day in the markets, guys. Like, uh, I'm not speaking for myself. I'm speaking for the team. Um, I see some of you guys are messaging me. Unbelievable days, guys. Like, I don't want to. I don't want to like um, say the percentage-wise how much some guys have done, but there's a lot of traders in our group who are packing it up after today. They're done trading. How many of us have said that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday we're done trading? That's it. We're happy. Like, they're taking long weekends. I got a couple guys messaging me right now telling me. Um, have a nice weekend <laughs> and it's it's nice guys that's that's the beauty of trading sometimes when you understand how to do this that's the beauty of also being a scalper you can trade throughout the days um, like right I really enjoy trading this time of the day my kids are at school it's quiet in the house I can focus I like the volume at this time of day this is like truly the best volume uh, with Wall Street. Wall Street is my all-time love, that 9.30 open, but this is a good session too. If you really are patient, disciplined, and you uh, you really appreciate how liquidity moves throughout the day and going into power hour. Yeah, congrats, Sarah. You passed phase one this week on all the on, on all your great trades. Amazing. Good job. Yep. Phase one, phase two, and then that's it. You're you're a funded trader, you're live. And and then you get your weekly paycheck. But you gotta always have risk management, okay? Okay, so we're walking into two thirty. And uh, so we kind of penetrated the supply area, pushing down. We can see, again, look, it's like a magnet. See how the volume came right back to the VWAP? Let's see gold and oil before we do anything. Okay, so gold, oil, continue to come back down. If oil breaks down below here, it's going to have a new daily drop. Oil could be bearish below that purple line. Gold, guys, unfortunately, like it's just this time of the day, 7, 8, 9, 10 a.m. Eastern. That's where gold makes its moves. And we'll watch going into 2.30. This is two guys. I'm going to be fully honest with you guys. I'm, I'm going to continue trading with you guys. I don't need to. I've already exceeded a daily goal. I've been trading in Wall Street. I traded um, post uh, myself and I did this session with you guys taking that US 30 and oil sell. I've completely exceeded my daily goal so I'm just going to trade with a little bit if I see a trade but like if it wasn't with you guys I would have been packed up a long time ago and been out of this markets. So you guys got to learn that too. You guys got to learn that discipline. Otherwise, you're going to get addicted to these markets and you're going to turn it into a casino. You don't want to do that. Make sure you got hobbies, guys. Hobbies. Stay busy. Okay. We got five seconds and we're going into 2.30, a new 30-minute candle. came up we came down we opened red okay so we're, we're again above the 9 EMA if you guys do follow that we're right at this critical area in the book right at this VWAP We've got some bids accumulating below us but there is still some offers so let's see if we can get a nice break maybe a closure above there Maybe it gets rejected, okay? And then we could look to maybe possibly sell the market down too. 
Again, look at the 50. We're hugging that 50 RSI. So it's it's anyone's ball game right now. This is where like the game is tied again. Uh, I'm done trading for the day. Blair, give uh, us a little update on NASDAQ real quick, or S&P, what's going on? NAS is trying to complete its head and shoulder inverse. It's still ranging. Yeah. We won't see it move until maybe power hour, if anything, they'll try and break out. If they don't, then we we'll probably just trade range all day. Okay, guys, you heard it from Yoda, not from me. So he's the specialist. So that's why everyone on YouTube, everyone on Zoom, if you've had a fantastic day in the markets, maybe pack it up. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. Or make sure like a trailing stop loss. You got your daily goal, you use it as a trailing stop loss. If, for example, if your goal is 1% and you have a 2% day today, maybe trail your daily 2% with 1.5%. That's in your pocket. And then if you get stopped out in power hour for a half percent, you still walk away with more than your daily goal. You're happy and we'll continue trading into tomorrow. You got to learn that. You got to learn that mindset. You got to learn that discipline, that psychology. You got to teach your brain to do this. You got to you got to teach yourself how to be a banker, okay? Banks do this. They have targets every single day. They hit them and banks close. They shut down. And then they do it again the next day. Banks don't gamble in the markets. They have goals, quarterly goals, yearly goals, quotas, they hit them, they achieve them, and they're out. Some banks get a little silly, they over leverage, like what you see what's happening right now in US. Some banks over leverage and they got caught with their hand in the cookie jar, but they don't get liquidated like me and you. When we get caught, what happens with us? We lose all our money and we get, um, nobody gives us a handout or a bailout. Banks, unfortunately, get bailed out with the system right now. So they continue to over leverage and try and risk and do all kinds of shady shit. And you and I, we pay for it. Like if you lose your money today, no one's going to call you and say, hey, here's a check. Here's your hundred bucks you lost today. It was a bad day. Here's your hundred dollars. Go do it again tomorrow. That's why we are retail traders. We have to be extra smart, guys. This is the financial markets, global financial markets. It's not easy to trade these. Okay, very difficult. If any trader tells you trading is easy, you know what you tell them? You're full of shit. Straight up. Tell them you're full of shit. Trading is not easy. Hey, hey Ron. Yeah. Trading's easy. You're... <laughs> <laughs> It's not, bro. You know, like, honestly, how long, oh. how many long nights have me and you put into this and, and, and things like that? So it's not. Um, oh, it's not. No, it's not. You got to be patient. Patience is the key. Like a player it's, e it, it's, it's easy to hit buy and sell, but it's not easy looking at the dollars up and down. Yeah. Can you guys sell gold? Will you guys tell me? Why don't you guys tell me? You guys are asking me. I'm going to ask you. Do you think it's a good time to sell gold right now? With this particular bar pattern that we have right now. Is this a good buy, guys? I'm going to ask everybody. Zoom. YouTube is asking, is this a good sell area? What do you guys think? I'm asking guys in Zoom. Or you guys in YouTube? No, no, no. I see no's everywhere. I see no's and I see no's. Why? Why is this not a good area to, to sell? It's clearly consolidating. Yeah, it's clearly consolidating. What would, like, you know, imply that there's a good sell set up here? If you sell, look, too. Okay, just over here. If you sell, you're coming into a big block of demand. So if you sell, you're going to you're gonna possibly come in here, but you have to understand when you come in here, it could get a wick and go right back up. So when you're selling, you, you could get a candle, red candle, come in here, drop 10 pips, maybe 15, maybe 20 max down there. But if you're looking to hold your sell and look for the bigger move, we got to clear this huge block here, this big green box, because this is holding gold all day today, 10 o'clock. Came in here, it held. Came in again at 12, it held. So, and it's still holding higher lows and building. So, no, not a good area to sell. So, thanks guys. You guys answered that question. I didn't even answer it. So, you guys know it's not a good area to sell.
bad risk to reward too. Yeah, your R and R. If you do sell that gold, like you got to understand, you're coming into a lot of bids down here, a lot of bids. Okay, so it's maybe the bigger picture will come down. Um, but if you're looking to sell, uh, then you you number one have to have like stop loss above this structure or above this daily, because it could range in here, and then. It could come up to pick up more liquidity. It could be a higher low up here. Like it could come up and got rejected, rejected. It, it is making lower highs, lower highs, lower highs, lower highs. So you're absolutely correct. This 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 is moving down, but it's going to be a longer hold. Okay, because there's like how it's pushing down. We do have a move that's pushing up, higher low, higher low. So if you do take a sell. It would it would be a longer hold. You, number one, have to have your stop above here or a little higher um, to give it room to breathe, so that in time, if it does break this area, yes, then it will break down. But right now, not the best. I would be a little bit more patient and wait. We're getting a little bit on you know, US 30. Okay, testing this daily. We got those 65 now. Let's watch. Okay, so they flipped this box. Let's flip it ourselves. Okay, what happened up here? Came close, retested. Looks like an impulse candle ready to break out. Let's see, guys, get ready. Yeah, here it goes. Okay, this is the impulse breakout. Where could it go up to? Possibly test this high. Okay, so if we can break out of here, it's about 20 pips. Let's see now. Okay, we broke out initially. Okay, there are the buyers. Let's see if we pull back into some bids or if we can hold this body of this candle. That's going to close in two and a half minutes. Half the candle is exhausted, half of it. So we still have another half to go. So I'm watching up here, this area, 33 to 40. We've officially broke above 50 RSI for the first time in a while. Okay, so that's important too. You're breaking into a little bit of bullish territory on the strength side. Okay, now it's building. Yeah, this you could buy here. This is a nice bullish candle that's building. I'm going to buy. I'm going to enter a buy. I'm going in right now at the top of this wick okay and I'm looking for it to tap that red line and then go into these offers up here and maybe hopefully take them out and then now we can maybe build a little bit of a base of some demand below this big candle that kind of took this high out I built this maybe inside here and then below that wick, that's kind of like your fair value gap. You're, you're kind of like your zone in there. If it pulls back in here, maybe to get more bids in here. And then if it pulls back, I'm going to see if it can come back into 33,290, grab these bids in here. But I'd like to also maybe close above this VWAP and maybe start to push up into this area and take out this high. That will be really nice. If we can get up there and take out this high, then it could really push to the upside. So the depth of market, the imbalance is shifting. We've got a lot of bids coming up. Oh, we just kind of, kind of like see how it's kind of crunching all of these offers. Okay, we just got to continue to take them out, the bigger ones, this big one. If we can get up there and transact with that one. Yeah, we're slowly getting up there. Here we go. Okay, we opened the ignited. Okay, just shifted red. Let's see if we can hold this ignited bar. Okay, couldn't. So it's retracing. Wick, nice pop. Let's see it now if it drives. Here we go. There's the drive. Okay. So let's see if we can come target red line and take out like all these high wicks over here. And if we can hold this candle, all these bids and drive. Should be in a little bit of profit right now. But let's see if we can hold, hold, hold. Even pull back, pull back into 50% of this body. If we can still hold, 
We're still holding our low. That's good. If we can still hold and build, add more bits. There we go. We popped. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. Yes. Oh, nasty. Oh my God, guys. Yes. 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 I, holy shit. I didn't even get, take a smoke, guys. Come on. Give me a like for this. Oh, 30 pips. God, with zero drawdown. This is getting stupid. Okay. Beautiful. I'm in and out. That's all I look for. Another 35 pips grabbed. My man, good job, guys. Yes. Good shit, guys. Whew. We're gonna get we're gonna get fat off all these pancakes we're eating. But did you guys like the way how I kind of explained my buy, my theory, my analysis, why I got in, what's going on with these bars, the depth of market, guys, everything, everything lined up perfectly. Conviction high. Do I go big lots? Yeah, why not? Good job. Jane, you got 23 pips. Congrats, guys. Yes. Are we doing this tomorrow? <laughs> Eric, what is tomorrow? Friday, bro. <laughs> oh, man. Now we're clearing. Oh. Oh, man. Unbelievable, guys. Okay. So, you know how this happened? This liquidity sweep down to the low. Okay. So, we were fortunate to get that big red candle. But look at where it came into the big box down in here. And it came, retraced, we held here, continuing to push. Now we're coming into that bigger supply. It could get rejected up here. Like, I understand, it could. But with this volume, what we want to do is take out this high. We want to, okay? That would be nice going in the afternoon. NASDAQ is also pumping up too. Um, watch NASDAQ if it can break here. Um, I remember Yoda said 13,410. If it can pop, we're looking at maybe 470s. New to the pip thing, how many? How much money is that? You make how much money this is, okay? So this candle right now alone is 40 pips. If you went in with a 0 0.1, 10 cents, you make $4. If you went in with, ooh, a dollar pip, you make $50 right now, US. If you went in with a standard, that's $10 a pip, you made 500 US dollars. If you went in with a 10 lot Lambo size, that's 5,000 US dollars. You decide whatever you want to trade, and that's what it is. You decide the money at the end of the day. Okay, so did we not just pop right into the big supply box? We just popped right in there. That's why you have a huge red transaction bubble, okay? So that's the wick of a candle. This is where you cannot get too greedy in here, guys. We've had this big red box on our chart since the entire call, three hours ago, okay? So it's not a surprise that we filled in here and there's a ton of transactions happening. If now the pullback holds and we come into the VWAP or we hold bids and they continue to accumulate, yes, we can continue. But this is a hard rejection in this area, okay? So you cannot get greedy in here, guys. Unless you want to hold a pullback, that's okay. If that's your style. Okay, almost 300 viewers, guys. Come on, pump up these likes, guys. This is a good time in the market to be trading. This gets me excited to come on YouTube at this time. Um, otherwise, we just go private, you know, but we really enjoy educating. I hope you guys learn too. It's not always about pips. It's about knowledge. Knowledge is pips too. If you learn something every day, that's, you know, you're adding something that can help you in life. That's, that's the most important thing, guys. We have fun trading together, um, but if you learn something, that's the most important thing. Okay, so we opened again, ignited bar, but we have a long upper wick, okay? It would have been nice if it was a short wick and we closed near the high. Then it would have been easier to take out the high and go up. We still got a long way to get back up to that high, and it's a nasty red bubble up there. So this is pullbacks. Now, if we pull back into the VWAP or 33,325, we've got 47 bids. They're accumulating in here. So this is a big, big fight in here now. See the depth of market? It's thin down here because most of the volume is all transacting right around here at the VWAP. Okay, so if we can kind of hold um, at least 50% of this big bar, 
this big red green one, like right around there. Maybe if it pulls back in here, we hold. Maybe we catch a wick and we can come back and transact in this big supply area. NASDAQ, not yet. Right at that red box coming down. No, guys, I have no time for a smoke break now. I'm going to finish off 3 o'clock and then I'll have my quick smoke and then I go pick up the kids. <laughs> Um, but this was an excellent afternoon, guys. Uh, tomorrow is Friday. Okay, so tomorrow's Friday. Um, I don't think I'll be doing this. We have London session. London session on YouTube to, for Friday. Um, some days, if I'm free on a Friday afternoon, we'll, we'll pop in um, and we'll do this. I'm back. Where were you, man? <laughs> Dude, I was on the phone. Someone called me. I'm like, I'm yelling, Naz, Naz, but I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Mohammed, sorry, I'm just reading your comment on YouTube. Ronnie, if we were to stay another five months, I can buy my new house for my parents, inshallah. Inshallah, you can, bro. You know, like, um, th that that makes me happy. If you can if you can do that for your parents and for yourself, that's amazing, bro. Let's let's stay focused and let's do that. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, on my, I'm on your side, man. I want to help you as much as I can. Um, that's why we're here. Look at this is also like life changing. You can buy your parents a home. You know, that's something nice to do. So and you can do that with trading, but you got to be smart. You got to be smart trading guys. Okay, let's not gamble these markets. I'm going to tell you first thing if you over leverage. Okay, you got I've over leveraged uh, a lot when I was learning trade and it never got me anywhere. All it got me was a burned account and loss of money. If you guys really learn how to do this and be humble with a move like today then that's it you know if you get greedy like if you took the, all of this into this big red box and you're still holding this red candle can come all the way back down like here you know when we were in the cell if you got greedy down there and you never took 50 60 70 80 pips out of the market it came right back up to your break even and you and you got nothing okay so remember guys what we're doing here is we're we're scalping the markets okay I'm not looking to hold a position for an entire day or two days or things like that, what other traders are looking at. I don't trade like that. So I don't want to pretend that I trade like that. Um, I, like for me, an 80, 100 pip candle, that's holding for me. Normally, I told you guys, I trade for singles and doubles, 10, 20, 30. This was another big candle I hit for 50 pips. Normally, I'm out of that. But this this book map, like depth of market really helps, guys. Look at the 50% retracement rate to the wick. We just place that red line there, okay? And it's holding. So we're holding the base of the candle, pushing right back up. Maybe we're gonna have momentum to break out of here. Mohammed, you made 400 profit today, 480 profit, 500 US dollar. Good, bro, good. Just continue every day, bro. But don't give that back. Don't give it back tomorrow. Don't give it back. Uh, Friday is a rough day to trade, guys. Make sure you guys understand that. Fridays can be rough days don't give back that's why I love that we got some traders in our group who are taking Friday off it's amazing if someone can hit your your weekly goal by Thursday Mo you looked at Dow on the 10 minute time frame it's beautiful yeah so we're building we could be building up here unfortunately I'm not gonna be here guys with power hour with you guys but if you guys do please please watch Beautiful building. Look at here. It's building. Okay. We came back down to the yellow line holding. Look at our bids increasing. Okay. It looks good. We got a nice rejection at 50% of the bite of the base of the candle. Okay. So we just got to finish strong. Remember, we're in this supply zone. So this is where a lot of transactions are going to happen. What time is power hour? No futures. Right now in uh, 10 more minutes. 10 minutes is power hour. 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. Last, The last trading hour of the New York Stock Exchange. Mohammed, uh, you're up 3% today. Amazing, bro. Good. Good, man. You've been killing it the last few days. Good for you. What is it that's helping you, if you don't mind me asking? So maybe we can help other traders. You're having a very, very good week. What is it? What is it? Like, um, what's helping you this week? Are you more patient? Are you more disciplined? Um, are you really following the structure of the market? Well, what what is Let's look at gold and oil guys, okay? So just a quick little recap. 
gold this is why i do not like to trade gold in the afternoon this is for the the, the guys this particular reason gold is more a you got to know time and sales how it trades seven eight nine ten a.m if you trade this in the afternoon what are we trading like i i we would be we would be getting so frustrated with this right now. All you can do is wait. You got to wait. Eventually, they will redistribute that volume, but right now, it's not the time. Oil moved. Okay, oil is moving. We got in that cell. Uh, could we have bought the bottom? Yes, we could have, but um, it's moving a little bit. I'm more interested in indices um, in, in the mid-afternoon. Mohanan says, guys, patience is the game. Okay, so he's learned patience and that's why he's having a successful week and hopefully he can continue this for weeks and months to come. Simple word, patience. That's all it is, guys. Okay, most retail traders, including myself, I was very, very impatient. And that's when I was making a lot of mistakes in the market. Once I learned patience and discipline, it was a game changer, guys. Allow the volume to come to you. There's nothing wrong with that. Look for those best trades that you can look for. If you're going to spend hours and hours and hours in the markets, don't be trading something like this when you can look for a much better setup. Concord, more confidence? Good. Yeah, that's what trading is. The more confidence you get, then 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 I, I don't like to use the word easy but trading will become more natural okay i i feel like when i trade when i trade it, it's it's very natural like i look for the same type of momentum every single day and it becomes like uh like just every single day it's the same thing it's kind of like when you go to work you have your routine it, we come into when we trade it's like going to work every day you come in you do your top-down analysis you look what securities you're looking to trade. You you check out if there's any big news that can affect any volatility in the market. You find your zones and you trade with patience and discipline and you follow the liquidity in the market. Uh, if you do not have a depth of market um, platform, I understand. This is, they're, they're not cheap, these, these things to have, okay? So, but once you get better and better and better as a trader and you want to take your trading to the next level, then maybe this is an investment that you can, you can, you can use. And it's not just Bookmap. There's other depth of market providers, platforms, but you have to subscribe to like Rhythmic or some data feed. Um, and that's where the, that's where the cost is, is in subscribing to these things. But also with Bookmap, guys, if you want to practice, you can download it. Go to Bookmap, use our link, download it. And you can practice with BTC. You can practice with Bitcoin all day, okay? If you can you can learn the Bitcoin book. You can, you can physically learn how uh, Bitcoin moves with offers and bids, get familiar with the order book. And then if you do feel comfortable that you want to use this on gold or crude oil or on US 30 or NASDAQ or... SMP, you can do that, but you can practice for free on a demo with uh, Bitcoin. Brian, where do you find the link? Just uh, on our YouTube channel, you know, like in the description uh, about us, there's there should be a book map link in there and it'll take you straight there. And then you can kind of download the demo and practice with Bitcoin if you want to get familiar with the book. Concord, you use volume profile? Yeah, vo volume profile is also really good. Anything that can tell you about the, the liquidity in the market can give you an added edge as opposed to just watching candlesticks. But don't disre don't disrespect my candlesticks, okay? Don't, I'm not gonna, don't, I don't wanna hear someone say bubbles are better than candles, okay? Bubbles are, they're good, but nothing like a traditional old school candlestick. Okay, so see, we couldn't really break this supply area. So it's struggling, but we're holding 50%. So I know my chart is getting really, really messy right now, but we've kind of found maybe our, our consolidating area right now. So we might consolidate here going into power hour where we're holding above 50% of that bullish candle, but it looks like it's possibly gonna break now. Okay, so did we hold, it might break, it might come down to the 9 EMA, maybe it comes back down to where we broke out here. So it might come back down to pick up the liquidity down here and then shoot back up. So like here, it came up, 
it might come back down, down to here or here. Maybe it holds here and then we come back up. Might be a break and then a pullback. Then if we get that move coming out of there at power hour, we could. But this could also develop in maybe a sell-off and at um, in the afternoon. So what I do is kind of get rid of this, kind of just readjust the charts if we're going to continue to trade. If maybe we lose this area um, this afternoon, maybe it's going to sell back below here to the next box down into here. And if you're looking kind of for that move, I kind of measure it to make sure if I'm going to get in there, that's about 20 pips halfway down there is about 40, 50 pips. Um, if it's holding, then I'm going to continue with my buy bias. As long as it doesn't break down here, here it was a little initial impulse grab, come down, but it might move back up. So if we clear this area this afternoon, this could be a bullish break to the upside. Or maybe it might just trade inside here. So we don't know. It's the last hour of trading, but buyers are accumulating. Dagsy was going to ask about Hakanashi candles. I've, I've, I've looked at those things, but you know, it's more for trend following, bro. If you're following trends, you can use Hakanashi, but it doesn't really give you the open high low close of a candle. It just gives you an average. So if we go to, it will show you like 50% of like the average of every single candle. So um, let's say, let's just talk numbers. So if we trade from zero, zero dollars to $10, our average is $5. The next candle will open right at $5. And then let's say that candle goes to $5 to $10 again. The next candle will open at $7.50. Kind of opens right at that average. So, but it doesn't really show you the open high low close. That's why I really love a traditional candlestick because you really see how it opens. You get to see the low, you get to see the high, and then you get to see the close. But if you really want to use Hekinashi, I know some traders that do really well with them, but they understand them in and out. Okay, don't just go and half-ass learn them. Really, really put your time to dedicate to learn them if that's what you want to trade with. There's also tick charts. There's all, all, all kinds of other type of style of the way how they display the, 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 the price action to us, but you got to get familiar with what you like to do, okay? There's Renko candles. How many of you guys have seen Renko candles? There's all kinds of things. But I stick to what works. You know, the Japanese have used these traditional candlestick bars for over 200 years when they were trading rice in the fields. This is how it goes back into like history. Um, so I'm not Japanese, but if you have, if you want to research that, they were trading traditional Japanese style candlesticks when they're trading rice in the fields 100, 200 years ago. And they've still been on our trading charts since then. So um, I feel comfortable trading these. Over here, trapped, trapped liquidity. So those sellers that sold on an impulse to the 90 MA, they're sitting right in here. Here they are. They got liquidated. So now the market is moving away from them. They're possibly either holding and drawdown or they're, they, this is their stop loss up here. Okay. So that's why sometimes if you're trading on impulse, you might get caught. This might be you sitting in the market. You added fuel to the fire for the bids. So they came down, they accepted you. They took your, they took your, your um, trade and right now it's bouncing right back up. So strong, we're still in the flag. This could be maybe a bullish breakout come into power hour in the next 20 seconds, guys. Okay, I'll stay for five more minutes, then I gotta bounce. Daniel, um, can you please tell me if you wait for the close of the candle to enter a trade? It's all intuition and conviction. There's a, a couple trades I took on impulse, but it's how you feel the flow of the volume. Other times I'm waiting for br breaks, retests, and, and confirmations, but there's sometimes in the market that I do take impulse trades, but there's all the way, like I took this one. Um, like um, there's a, a time and a place, the way how it's building up. And you want to be part of that kind of volume that's going to explode. So there's a time and place. You don't want to take impulse trades when you're trading in consolidation. You want to do them when it's, there's a big development of, um, of volume. So then you're part of that, that, re that redistribution. 
Um, MG, what is VWAP? Volume weighted average price. It's a technical indicator. It's similar to a moving average, but it's it's weighted with the volume and the price action. It's a two-in-one indicator. It's more institutions use it a lot, um, and it comes with book map here, so that's why I'm following it as well. It's kind of like if we're below if we're below the VWAP. If you're buying, it's kind of you're buying at a discount. Okay, let's put it that way. Let's talk simple. So if we're if we're buying and it's below the VWAP, it's kind of you're buying at a discount. Okay, it's this is like the average price for your product. Okay, so let's say if we're buying a TV, normally it's a thousand dollars right here. Maybe it goes on sale to seven hundred dollars, and then we're below the average price, and that's a good buy. Okay, so the bids, as long as they can hold. And then, like, if you're buying above now, if you're buying up here, you're buying above the the like the average price. So now you're buying. That's when you say like you're buying the high. You know, if the the TV price is a thousand dollars, but now it's twelve hundred, you're kind of buying two hundred dollars above the the average price. Okay, so that's like this is the average price where the market likes to come back down to to liquidate to consolidate here fair value inside here but when we move away from this and we're moving fast that's when you know if you're in a buy and you position yourself then that's when we're taking out all these offers and that's when it's flying I use analogies guys with my explanations you know to try and keep it simple for everybody because not everyone if we get real intricate and start breaking these things down again it might turn into those terms and people don't understand those terms I'm not here to talk with the big words and sound like I'm so educated here let's just talk for real what's going on in here that's the way how I I, I asked someone when I was learning can you just talk to me like a normal person as if we're uh, as if we're outside together and we're having a cigarette we're having a smoke together can you just teach me in normal words what's going on I don't need all those bullshit words teach me right now how I'll understand this and that's the way how I like to teach people Something we can all understand. If we want to learn technical words, we can, okay? But for some people, it goes over their head and they don't focus on what's what's most important. So you see now how the market maybe wants to rotate right back down to this VWAP, to that nice price in here. But then you see above, look at where the bids are, okay? We've got 47 sitting above, 35 now. We don't have too much below, so it looks like if it wants to come down here, it, it looks like the market wants to hold the VWAP. But if it kind of, we watch too if these get pulled, because if they get pulled, then they might come down here and then we'll break this and drop down. And that's this kind of support level that we could break in this flag pattern right over here. Sam, how can you stop blowing your equity? It's the, the problem you have. You gotta stop over leveraging, my man. You have to, you gotta learn it. Cause it's, you you're, you can see right now, it's, you, that's the problem you have. If you have a problem, you gotta fix it, okay? The only way to fix it is by fixing your leveraging. You gotta trade smaller for your account, okay? If you don't have that type of account to trade with that leverage every single trade you get into you're going to panic in a little bit of drawdown because you're, you're you're going too big for your account you need to learn right now how to scale that down because you're going to have a problem going forward it's not going to stop that problem is going to continue to exist and all you're going to do is keep losing more and more and more money believe me we've all been there okay you're not the only one here what do I think about tra only trading 1%? I, I, that's what we teach here. Half a percent, 1% can literally change your life here. Um, I'm not telling everyone to make 10%, 100% per day. Half a percent, 1% is life changing. Once you understand that, then you'll, you'll understand the power of pips. Okay, guys, that's it for me. 305. This was an awesome session. Yoda, thank you for joining, bro. And uh, guys, thank you for everyone that joined. It was an excellent call. Hopefully we learned something. If you guys are trading into the last hour of the day, please be careful. It can get volatile. Um, tomorrow's Friday. We'll have live London, guys, on YouTube and Zoom, 3 a.m. Um, and day, uh, and also, guys, in the Zoom, I'm also doing the Wall Street session with us. So it's going to be like a, a, a session for all of us. 
and then uh, PK has post. And that's why in the mid-afternoon Friday, guys, I don't know if I'll be able to come back on because it's a long day for me. Um, so we'll, we'll see how the markets are moving, okay? But we will have live London together. Um, thank Blair for joining. Everyone on Zoom, thank you guys. Hopefully you guys learned that ignited candle today. Um, that was a good lesson in today's markets and uh, got some pips out of it. Everyone on, on YouTube, thank you guys so much again for joining in. Appreciate all of you guys. Great questions. Hopefully you guys learned something. Thing. you caught some pips today with us and uh, let's continue growing those accounts together continue scaling if you guys can hit the like subscribe maybe share the video with your friends or other trading groups let's get more people in here learning how to trade um, we can look at we can help people buy homes for their parents like do nice things so that's what we can help for here too and also help you guys um, if you want to buy yourself a new home and things like that okay and uh, Good day, everybody. Happy Thursday. Enjoy the NBA games. Enjoy everything. I'm going to go off for a little smoke. Thank you, Habibi. Uh, Ali, shukran, bro. Um, hopefully, you guys caught all your pips today. See you guys. Had a really fun week. Make sure you hit that notification bell, guys, so that you can stay tapped in because sometimes we just spur of the moment. We'll, we'll start a YouTube call, and it's at different times of the day, so we really want you guys to not miss out. Okay, guys? Thank you guys so much. Great questions today, guys. Hopefully, you guys learned something. Adonis, good job, bro. Ali, good job. Lady Stone, hopefully, you did good. Kingsford, up 2% now. Amazing, bro. Okay, good job, guys. Um, and the signals hit, too. Really good today, too. So, um, all around, great day. Good stuff, guys. Everybody, let's make this a habit every day together, okay? Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Blair. Yes, sir. Have a good night, everyone. Hey guys, good morning, good morning, welcome, welcome, welcome to another live session of Stock Sniper Trading. My name is Dave, guys, my partner is Ron. Let's get down to business here, guys. Jumping in on US 30, sell, okay? I'm jumping in. That, guys, that's a 100 pip drop. It's, yes, we caught it. Hey, guys, 200 pips, please, secure. <laughs> Trading with a perfect broker is the key, which takes you one step ahead. At AFX, we have you covered. The future of Forex is zero commission. Here at AFX, we offer ultra low commission, which starts at 99 cents per lot. Our accounts spread start from 0.0 pips. With account leverage up to 500x, and can have a minimum deposit of $100, with an additional 100% deposit bonus, regulated by HEMC Greece, compliant with ESMA, EU, regulated with FSEA, South Africa. Nothing to lose, but something to gain. Trade with the world's most liquid market provider, AFX, recommended by Stock Sniper Trading. To get started use the affiliate link below. As a trader, we all look for tight or low spreads, which helps us to get in and out of the market. Using the right broker can help us try different strategies with multiple options of brokers on the web. Here at Stock Sniper Trading, we have a recommended broker that is Hanko Trade with spreads as low as zero pips and leverage up to 500x hanko trade is just one click away with multiple account types to choose from you also have a minimum deposit of ten dollars using hanko trades affiliate program refer a friend and earn up to a 40 percent commission on trading volume built by traders for traders hanko trade